We have a $10 anonymous donation from Loving the Marathon. I lost my granny to cancer a couple years ago, and it's really inspiring to see such dedication and displays of skill for such a great cause. And a $40 anonymous donation comment is thanks to all of you. Thank you for the donations. Whoa. Uh, yeah, is it working? That's right. working. It's a Yoshi's volume right now. Yeah. Yeah. What's the total on the WACA incentive? I'll get that for you. <laughs> so Killing's so winning then? Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess I'm ready to go. All right, three, two, one, go. All right, hello everyone, I am Anatomy and I'm gonna be running some Paper Mario 90%. Um, if you liked Pi's run at SGDQ, this run should entertain you as well. There's a lot of uh, crazy sequence breaks I'm going to be doing that weren't, weren't really shown off at SGDQ. All right, so there's like, there's been a ton of stuff that's happened to this game in the past, uh, in the past year. Um, throughout 2013, this is probably one of the most broken games of 2013, if not the most broken game. Uh, when I first picked up this game, the record for this game was um, just over four hours. Now the record for the game is down to 217. So in the span of a year, the game got cut almost in half by tricks. It used to be Pretty, pretty clean, not a lot of stuff going on, but now there's a ton of tricks that uh, break it up. So anyway, um, the way I move throughout the game is by spinning. It's the fastest way to move. Um, and what I do at the end is I jump to cut my spin short. If I don't do that, there's an animation where um, Mario just kind of stops, stops flat. So I have to uh, make sure I jump out of all my spins. Otherwise, my movement's gonna be really slow. So the castle and the prologue in general is just really basic. Uh, it's pretty much just like a tutorial for the game. Um, just teaching you all the basic stuff. Uh, how all your stats work, like your badges, everything. Like the game itself is your typical RPG. Like you have, uh, it's just turn-based combat. But the thing that makes this game unique is that there's a lot of movement and tricks involved. And those two things are generally what are gonna decide your time, not the battles themselves. 
So this fight coming up is 100% scripted, but it's gonna it's gonna let me show off a couple things that are uh, pretty subtle that I'm gonna be doing throughout the run. So, um, first of all, for anyone who hasn't played the game, there's three major stats in the game that you have. You have HP, you have FP, which is basically your mana, and you have badge points. So throughout the game, I'm gonna be getting items called badges. Um, and when I equip them with badge points, they give me either a special ability or they'll give me an upgrade in like HP or something like that. So each time I level up in the game uh, with 100 star points, I get to pick either HP, FP, or BP. All right, so like I was saying, this fight is 100% scripted, but one interesting thing in this game is that there are uh, things called action commands. And basically what an action command is, is uh, whenever I use an attack, um, there's a certain timing where you can either do more damage or get a block or something like that. But for now, I don't have it. But one thing there is in this game that uh, a Japanese player named Oxo, Oxo has found is there's something that we call quick jumps, where basically as I'm walking up to uh, my enemy to jump on them, for whatever reason, you have a few frames where you can either mash or just press an input once to speed up your jump. So I'm doing that right now. And uh, that saves about like 10 frames per jump if you get it perfectly. And I'll show off right now how much slower it is if I don't do that. Just won't press anything and you can see there's this longer animation. So throughout the course of the run I'll be doing that. It's one of the smaller things that I do. And that saves like probably in the ballpark of like eight seconds. So in prologue it's really easy because I don't have action commands yet. But when I do get action commands I have to time them. Otherwise uh, I won't be able to get them. And if I time them wrong, I won't even be able to hit the action command. I'll just be locked out. Got a $100 donation donated anonymously. Thank you, uh, thank you all involved in AGDQ for a great week of speedruns and funds. Events like this makes me proud to be a gamer. Put this donation to save the Yoshis. Just kidding. Let's speedy spin a cure to cancer. All right, so now, Prologue is filled with cutscenes, so this is one of the many cutscenes. Uh, it's pretty much just like introducing the story. Basically, as you saw at the beginning of the game, the castle got taken away. So I have to, like, it's, it's your typical Mario storyline. Um, I have to go, go to the castle, beat Bowser, save Princess Peach. So these stars are going to help me out throughout the game. And uh, later on, they're going to give me special abilities that are going to help me kill stuff a lot easier. So for now, it's just a lot of waiting around. And as you'll notice, um, all I'm doing for the text right now is I'm just holding down the B button. That's one thing that's really nice about this game because you're never gonna, you're never gonna lose frames or anything like that to mashing text. It's always optimal, and it's fa in fact, it's actually slower if you press a button while you're holding down the B button. So yeah, that's one of the things that this game did really well. The uh, text wor works out really nicely. With uh, questions I could ask later on, um, it's pretty much as simple as like if I wanna say no to a question, I'll just press the B button again. I don't have to actually scroll down and press A in it. I can just press the B button and it selects no immediately. So that's another thing that's really nice. All right, so now I'm finally awake. This guy's basically just telling me where I am. So uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to get the hammer. It's required to beat the game and it's required to get out of the village. So I need to talk to a few guys around the village and uh, then I'll be able to get the hammer and be on my way. So this guy right here, I need to talk to him, and he tells me to go to the fence. So now another cutscene. Like I said, prologue's filled with them. Uh, this pretty much tells me why I need the hammer. Like this, this uh, Kami Koopa is gonna throw down a block that's gonna just 
pretty much break the gate, and I won't be able to get anywhere, so. So I just got on, but I want to let you guys know about a couple of the prizes you can win during this game. Uh, you've got both a P Paper Mario cast poster and Super Paper Link. Not I'm not exactly sure what that is, but <laughs> shout outs to Croco Goat and Gary Storkamp for donating both of those prizes. The minimum donation is $10 to get into the bidding for either one of those prizes. All right, so I'm back over here. And as you can see, the balcony is just completely gone. So for whatever reason, it just breaks. And I have to follow this guy down here. And this brings me to like another part of the tutorial of Prologue, where it's going to teach me how to fight properly, I guess. Um, so I got to talk to him. And then I'm going into what's called the Junior Trooper Playground. And that's where the hammer is located. So. Uh, normally, in an any percent run, what I would do in this room is I would get a bunch of coins which I need later for the speedy spin badge. But since uh, the kill whack -a donation incentive is met, I don't need to get any coins in here. I'm just gonna get the hammer and immediately leave. And I'm gonna use the whack -a bumps for coins later. And this next fight is actually skippable, but it takes like, what, how many uh, it's, frame perfect jumps? It's like 20 or something. Yeah, that's something, I'll be, that's something I'll be explaining later. Um, there's this technique in this game called loading zone storage where uh, basically, you need to be on the ground for two frames for a loading zone to trigger. So, with frame perfect jumps, you can actually go inside of a loading zone, and then uh, as long as you jump frame perfect and never touch the ground for more than two frames, you can just get further and further away from a loading zone. And I'm going to be abusing that later in the run. Although it's not going to be that crazy, there's a setup for a certain trick that I'm going to be using, but it'll show off uh, loading zone storage. All right, so again, this fight is pretty much just scripted. Uh, I just have to jump five times. And he's dead. And this shows off star points now. So when I get 100 of them, I level up, and I get to choose either HP, FP, or BP, like I was saying before. All right, so now I want to go back to the village. So getting my first item right here. Um, I'm going to be using items a lot throughout the game. Since um, this is any percent, I'm going to be a very low level by the end of the game, so I'm going to be using items a lot because they're very strong, and uh, I'm not going to have many other abilities that can do what items can for me. So, As you saw on that last screen, too, there's, uh, there's just enemies all over the screen. Um, if I run into one, get hit by one, whatever, it's going to start a battle or what we call an encounter. So I want to avoid them as much as I can. There are a few later on that I need to get into to progress through the chapters or whatever, but uh, for the most part, I just want to avoid every single enemy I can. Otherwise, it's just a waste of like 10 seconds for each encounter. So I'm gonna have to get in the encounter and then run away. And this is my first badge right here, the uh, power jump badge. And he wants to give me a tutorial, so I just say no to both. And this will show off how badge points work as soon as this cutscene ends. So. Pretty much right now, I start off with three badge points. Uh, power jump costs one. So I'm going to equip it, and I'm still going to have space for other stuff later on. But I'm going to need power jump for the next couple fights. So I'm just going to equip it immediately. And I'm finally out of the village. So now there's a couple screens here that are kind of difficult. Um, these screens are very narrow. So it can be kind of hard to get around these Goombas right here, but usually it's pretty easy. There's another badge right here that I want to get called Close Call, which I'm going to be using a lot later in the run. But basically what the Close Call badge does is if I'm in danger, which is five or less HP, um, enemies have a chance to just completely miss their attack on me. It's about a 25% chance, but uh, if it works, it's good because it saves me time. But if not, it's not a big deal. All right, so this fight is pretty basic. Um, two Goombas, one has six HP, the red one has seven HP. So what I want to do here is get them both to three HP. And the reason for that is with that fire flower I picked up, it does three damage to each enemy on the screen. So since both are at three, I'm going to kill them both with this one attack 
And normally you would get some text if, uh, if you killed one by themselves. So I want to kill both at the same time. Just to avoid that text. It saves a decent amount of time. All right, so now I'm at one HP, one FP. So I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna go to the screen right before this one, and fill up my stats using using what's called a heart block, which is right here. And I'll just miss jumping at it like that. And now I have full stats again, going into the next fight. So now I have to do a fight with uh, the Goomba King. And this fight is pretty unique because there's a, a gimmick in the fight where uh, you can actually hit the environment and do extra damage to the enemies. It's, I think it's the only fight in the whole game where you can do this, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Basically, um, you're gonna notice when I enter the fight, there's a Band-Aid on the tree in the background. And one thing that probably not a lot of people know is that you can actually attack that Band-Aid, and when you do, it uh, drops a goom nut down onto all three of the enemies, so that's going to clear out everything on the screen a lot faster. All right, so here we go. This guy has 10 HP, so it's a pretty easy fight. Uh, I have full FP, full health, so nothing can really go wrong here. But as you can see, that Band-Aid in the back, so I'm going to attack that right now. Goombario does one damage, so I want to attack with him. And it hits everything for three, so those two are dead and I'll be able to finish him off this turn. All right, so again, another easy fight. So now this guy goes back and he hides in his castle or whatever, and uh, I need to find a switch to pretty much destroy his castle. So it's just over here in this bush. So I hit that, and then another cutscene, so if you have couple donations or whatever. Sure, um, in case you guys are just joining us for Paper Mario, want to remind you guys who we are. We are Speed Demos Archive and Speedruns Live, uh, two of the greatest gaming communities in the world, I would say. Coming together to put on Awesome Games Done Quick 2014. We're here to raise money for PCF, otherwise known as the Prevent Cancer Foundation, <coughs> who is raising money to do exactly what they say they're doing, prevent cancer. Um, so far, you guys have raised, actually, let me check that total one more time. $689,000, coming up very close to 700,000. Any chance we can hit that before the end of this run? We shall see. Want to read off a couple of y'all's donations. We got a $75 donation from, I'm sorry, um, Jean Griesbach. Uh, finally, Paper Mario time. I've been waiting for this. Good luck on the run, and I'm hoping for more Paper Mario runs and games for future marathons. Flavio Life. Also a $70 donation from The Nerd Wonder. Here's another $70 for Yoshi Fan's Perfect Run. Also a $10 donation from Tumo Sari. Another great marathon. Good job, guys. Thank you very much. All right, so this cutscene, uh, pretty much just giving more of the story. It introduces the Koopa Bros, which I'm actually not even going to be fighting throughout the entire game, but uh, they're supposed to be the boss of chapter one, but as you'll see later on, um, I won't even need to fight them. I'm not going to spoil everything yet, but um, I'll be skipping a lot of bosses. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so there's a little bit of movement now again, uh, it's all just basic stuff. What I'm doing now is I want to go to Shooting Star Summit, which is um, where the Star Spirits are, and they wanted me to meet them there. So I have to go through Toad Town first. Just a couple screens of basic movement, like nothing special here. Got a $150 donation from Donald Swade. Luigi's been to all of Mario's parties, and it's good to know he'll stay at the party at the end. The brothers that play together stay together. I've watched several AGDQs with my brother, and he's donated hundreds in the past to your awesome cause. It's only fitting I match his donation. In the name of brotherly love, spare the walker. Got $100 from Sir George. 
Here's a hundred dollars to a reprise of the pie slash blue glass old man river duet. <laughs> <laughs> if that's not an option, <clears throat> pie and blue glass each pick where fifty dollars goes. You got them both here on the couch for you. Is that an option? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was asking if you guys knew where you wanted to allocate your 50 each. What, what are some of the file names for uh Yeah, for let me check on that real quick for you. Um, you wanting Wind Waker or Chrono Trigger? Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger. Uh, yeah, just to give you guys a quick update on those file names since they're coming up in a few hours. Right now, um, Ayla would be right now named Barry at $1,555. Free in second place at 580 for Chrono right now, it's Meta at 3,292, followed by the Yeti at 2,486. For Frog, it's actually relatively close. Nami at 1,832. Frog or Froge at 1,535. For Luca, we've got W Mom at 1,045 and Neuro at 931. For Magus, we've got uh, y S A N G Yang Sang, I don't know, at $580, Janice at $135. For Marley, we've got another very close race, Nadia at $570, Rares at $500, and Robo at $1,366. He's got Ryan D. And for Bender, $720. And I'm assuming you can also name. I'm not seeing it here in the index, but you can actually also name the Epoch. The, uh... oh, it's at the top of the list. Oh, all right. Because we, <laughs> for some reason, forgot that was a thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, right now that's, uh, <clears throat> uh, we've got $176 uh, for the top choice there. So again, it's uh, anybody's game and quite a few of those bid wars. What, what is it? What's for Epoch? No, I meant what are the names? Oh. oh, actually, it's not loading for me. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so that item I just got is called the Lucky Star. Um, that's what's going to give me action commands now. So there's another tutorial there which I had to say no to. And this is just kind of like the introductory fight where you learn how to use them. So you'll see I'm going to be doing a lot more damage now because uh, I have to time my power jump like that. So this guy has 8 HP, but what I'm going to do is instead of power jumping again, I'm going to head bonk right here. So now he has two health left. And the reason I don't just power jump again is because I want more FP later on. So I'm just gonna jump again, and now he's dead. So that, that's a little bit slower than doing two power jumps, but uh, it's important because I need the FP for the next fight coming up. So anyway, uh, we're pretty much at the end of prologue, and this is gonna be our first trick coming up. There are actually two ways you can get out of prologue that aren't intended. Um, one of them is called Merlin Skip, which Pi did at SGDQ. Um, basically, you use an NPC to clip out of bounds and fall into Merlin's house. The other one is called Black Toad Skip. Um, it is the faster and more difficult way to get out of Prologue. So that's what I'm going to be attempting right here. And that's going to show off some out of bounds stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to get it, but it is a pretty precise trick. Basically, I'm just going to be trying to walk along like the seam of the world when I clip out of bounds, and I want to hit the loading zone for uh, Chapter 1. So I'm going to use this shopkeeper to clip out of bounds, like that. And now what I want to do is get to the other loading, or get to the other side of this loading zone right here. And that should be fine. Okay, now I need to walk along this entire scene. If I fall here, it's not really a big deal. But I need to constantly adjust myself to uh, try to walk along this scene. But as I was saying, it is pretty precise. I only have a few pixels to walk on. And if I was to walk too far upwards, I would clip back in bounds, and uh, I would lose a lot of time. So I'm just trying to take it really safe. Normally, I would be doing this a lot faster in actual attempts, but uh, since it's a marathon, I don't want to risk it. And I clip back in bounds. That is bad. All right, I'm just going to go do it again, I guess because it is still faster than doing Merlin Skip. But yeah, that was really bad. It was right at the end. Oh well. My $50, let's put it towards Epoch being named TARDIS. TARDIS? Yep. How would you like to spell that? 
G A R D I S, all capitals. Is, okay. Time and relative dimension in space. All right, trying this again now, but uh, yeah, hopefully I will be able to get it this time. I'm getting closer. Okay, it should be one more fall and then I should be able to make it. Okay, I'm gonna try to land in the loading zone now. Might make it with this fall, might have to go one more. Yeah, one more. Okay, like that. Nice. So that was pretty slow, but uh, not much I can do, I guess. Um, I usually do like a different method for that trick where I actually reset my controller to get a perfect angle for that trick so I can walk along the seam perfectly. Yeah, the trick's really finicky with um, how your controller input is lined up. You can't go at uh, a straight upright angle with, um, with every controller, so. He has to yeah. keep readjusting himself with jumping and then Oh, hammering. what am I doing? I don't need coins. But yeah, it's, it's just based on your control stick angle. So some people can actually do it just by, uh, just by walking along the whole scene, just holding upright. But unfortunately, I, I'm unlucky. My control stick is unable to do that, so I have to do all that adjusting. <laughs> All right. TRBI. There it is. <laughs> okay, so now I'm in Koopa Village, and this is pretty much the only way to get further in the chapter. Um, this Koopa right here named um, named Cooper. <laughs> Cooper named Cooper. <laughs> text game. It's his name. But uh, yeah, he got his shell taken away. Uh, so I have to get it back from these fuzzies. So I'm gonna have to play a little mini game coming up, which is actually pretty easy to fail if I'm not fully paying attention or something like that. I've actually lost runs to this because I just wasn't even looking at my TV. But yeah, uh, basically this, the, there's four fuzzies, one of them has the shell, and I just need to pick the right tree at the end. So there's three phases, it's gonna get continually faster. Um, if I was to I guess pick the wrong one. I can either get into an encounter or get like a coin drop or something like that. So the last one is the scariest. If he goes between two at the same time, back and forth, it looks kind of like a blur. So hopefully he doesn't do that, which he did. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I got it anyway, so it's fine. <clears throat> now I got to give his shell back. So Cooper is the second partner, and uh, he has a lot better attacks than Gumbario does, but his attacks still aren't really that strong. Um, some of the partners later on are going to be getting used a lot more than Cooper and Gumbario will. So that right there is actually the end of Gumbario. You're not going to see him for the rest of the run. He's uh, pretty weak. So anyway, this is why I needed the 3 FP. Um, I'm using a POW block here. This hits everything for two, and these guys have three HP. So I'm just going to do a power shell right here, and that hits everything for one, so they're all dead. Um, power shell costs three FP, so and I, as you can see, I'm at zero. If I didn't hang on to it, I wouldn't have uh, been able to kill them that fast. All right. So now that I have uh, Cooper, I can pretty much just leave, and I'm going to go to the Cooper Rose Fortress. But um, like I was saying before, uh, I'm not actually going to end up killing the boss. There's a reason I'm going to the fortress, though, which I'm going to explain in a little bit. But um, yeah, I won't be in the fortress for very long. Got a $100 donation from Insensato. My third and last donation. I have watched so much of this year's AGDQ that my sleep schedule has never been worse off. This marathon definitely lived up to the massive hype. Shoutouts to one of my favorite speedrunners, I Ate Your Pie, as well as to all of the Paper Mario runners. Hope that bad shop isn't too terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
carefully. Okay. Yeah, that's one thing I'll have to explain in a little bit. Um, I already mentioned the Speedy Spin Badge, but I have to get it through the Badge Shop, which is uh, it's RNG. So as I get closer, I'll explain that. But anyway, I'm at the Fortress now. So another little cutscene. This guy's surprised that I'm here and whatnot, so. Um, so this is the first, I guess, intentional encounter of the run. Um, I need to fight this guy because he's carrying the key for the lock. So what I'm going to do is power jump this guy for three. He has four HP, so now I'm going to power shell again. So the Koopa's going to die, but the bomb will not die. But as you can see, he lit up like that. So he just ends up killing himself by doing that. So I didn't actually have to do anything to kill him. So I level up FP here. I'm going to need a lot of it during this run. And I can keep going. So there's another trick coming up. Um, we don't actually have a name for it, but uh, I usually just call it stair skip, even though there's also a staircase skip in Chapter 7. But yeah, um, this will show you some more out of bounds stuff. It can be pretty crazy and a little bit confusing, but uh, I'll try to explain it as I do it. But first, I'm going to grab this badge right here, which is Power Bounce. And you'll be seeing a lot of that badge later on in the run. All right, so this screen right here, this is where stair skip is. So normally what you have to do in this room is you have to fight this Koopa who drops a switch and then he lowers the stairs. But instead I can do this, I can fall down to the basement. Now what I want to do is hit the loading zone behind the top door. All right, now I'm on the top floor, just like that. So I went from the middle floor all the way to the basement and then up to the top floor. And that allowed me to skip a key and a bunch of other fights. So that trick right there saves probably like two or three minutes. And it's going to allow me to get immediately to Bombette, which is the next partner. So I have to fall for this trap right here. It's the only way you can continue. And this is going to put me into the jail where Bombette is. So after I meet her, um, it kind of teaches you how to use her ability. Um, you'll, you'll notice there's a crack on the wall on the left side as soon as the camera zooms around. But uh, yeah, that pretty much just shows you what to do with Bombette. She can blow up walls. Um, and she's actually required to beat the game, which is the only reason I'm here, actually. Um, now that I have Bombette, I don't need to be in Chapter 1 anymore. The only reason I'm here is because I absolutely need her to beat the game. There's no other way to do it. So as soon as I'm done this next fight, I'm just going to leave Chapter 1, and I'm going to go back to Toad Town. And uh, that'll lead us into our next trick. And that's the one I was mentioning earlier. That's going uh, to involve loading zone storage, which is pretty confusing. I mean, most of you probably will have no idea what's going on as I do the trick, but I'll do my best to explain it. Anyway, I'm going to use that fire flower I picked up just a little while ago. And this is going to instantly kill both of the bombs. So the Koopa has one more health left, which I'm just going to use Bombat's basic ability right here to kill him. And that's done. So now I just need to head back to Toad Town. Got to go all the way back through Chapter 1. Anatomy Z, what would you like all of your donations to go towards? Uh, good question. Um, I know we're basically down to file names at this point. Yeah. Uh, can I decide after my run? Is that okay? Or yep, that'll be fine. All right. Oh. I guess there's save uh, the whole Waka situation. Yeah, it's it's still kill, right? Like, it, yeah, it, it's... Sh What's that? What I would like to do? I would like to kill them. I would like to kill Waka because it's faster. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that has to be cut off now anyway. Um, my route would have been a little bit different. I would have had to gather coins if I was not killing Waka. So, uh, at this point, since I didn't gather any coins... He's going to die, so you're all going to have to say goodbye to Waka when I get there. Mm. All right, so now I'm back in Toad Town, and this is the 
first, I guess, major trick of the run. It's also one of the hardest. It's called log skip. Um, it's going to abuse loading zone storage. So I'm going to do the same thing as black toad skip. I'm going to clip out of bounds right here. And then what I'm going to do is basically trigger a loading zone from underneath the world and land far enough away afterwards so that when, um, when I complete the trick, I will clear a barricade that's on the next screen that's usually there until the end of chapter one. So right now what I'm trying to do is trigger the loading zone. Uh, it's pretty precise. I may not get it on my first few tries here. Okay, I think I have it triggered right now. So now what I need to do is land far enough away. Hopefully it's triggered. There's really no way to know. All right, I got it. So as you can see, this throws me underneath the logs on the next screen, and that basically skips check one. All right, so right here I'm getting the first seed of the game. Um, I'm gonna need them later to get into chapter six. There are four seeds throughout the game, and uh, the only way to get to chapter six is by getting those seeds. All right, so now I'm going to chapter two. Um, this is where I'm going to get my whack -a bumps for coins, and this is also where I'm going to meet Paracarry, which is probably the, I guess, most useful partner in uh, most of the fights in the game. Um, his main ability, Shell Shot, does a lot of damage, and uh, I'm going to be using it quite a bit. On top of that, he's also going to help me with some stuff later on. Uh, just like Bombat 2, he is required to beat the game. You need to fly over some stuff with him so there's no actual way to skip him. So this is pretty much the only reason that I'm going to uh, chapter two. Got a $50 donation from uh, SaltyGamer00. Take my money, Anat. Use this to bribe Huffy Puffy into giving you good RNG. <laughs> or put it towards whatever you want. Uh, hopefully I get the good RNG. I'd rather have that. What he's talking about is a fight in Chapter 6 that's uh, really RNG-based. Um, I can lose a ton of time on that fight, so hopefully I'll get some luck during that, during that fight. But anyway, uh, this is where I meet Paracarry, so he's sad and stuff because he needs his letters, so what I need to do is go through the desert and get three letters that he lost in here. At the same time, I'm also going to be collecting whack bumps which um, I'm going to get the first of right now. So this poor guy can take eight hits. Uh, I'm gonna get all eight whack -a, -bumps, whack a bumps I need three to actually use later on, and I'm gonna use the other five for coins. Um, conveniently, they sell for a lot, so it's definitely the best way to get coins early on in the game. So it's a letter right here. I have to reach with Cooper. That's the first letter. So now I gotta keep going. And Eventually, I'm going to have to backtrack over here, too, because there's another seed, but the only way to reach it is with Paracarry. So our second letter right here, just going back up. Going to backtrack again. And I'm going to go over into the last area now, where there's one more letter that I need to get. All right, got to go down the slide right here. Only way to get over here. Actually, actually, that's wrong. There's actually a trick you can do to um, skip that slide completely, but it actually is slower than going down the slide. So, no point in really doing that. You might lose time doing the trick. So one more slide right here. This one is required. And the last letter is right here. So I'm just gonna reach it with Cooper and drop down. That's gonna save a little bit of time. Not much, but saving frames. All right, anyway, so now I have all three letters, so I'm gonna go back to, to uh, Paracarry. And I'm gonna grab another whack -a bump on the way there. So this will be my second one. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, I guess, um, you'll, you'll notice I'm grabbing items with my hammer. Um, the reason for that is obviously you can grab them from further away. And on top of that, if you're spinning and you spin into an item, you're gonna get a long animation. It uh, wastes about a second. So pretty much every item throughout the game, I'm going to make sure that I'm not spinning, otherwise it's going to just lose me time. Alright, so now I give him all the letters, and he's going to join me and stuff. 
So now, like I was saying, I'm going to backtrack back into the desert, and I'm going to get the flower seed again for chapter six, as well as my other whack -a -bump. So I'm going to get my third one right now, and I'm going to need to get five later. So I'm going to have to keep going in and out of the screen to get uh, five more wackos. Four more. I've got a $50 donation from Joseph Lapani. Here's $50 towards getting a kid chameleon run from Pi next year. <laughs> $20 donation from Clig. Hey guys, Clig here. Good to see Paper Mario at HDQ. Sorry I couldn't be there. It's awesome that so much money has been donated. Keep it up. Hashtag break the game. Oh, just wait. You'll see the game broken very soon. <laughs> All right, so that was the second flower seed I just got. Mm -hmm. And just like chapter one, that's the only thing I need here. So I'm just going to leave chapter two now. Um, before I do that, I'm going to get the rest of my whack -a bumps And then uh, the biggest sequence break in the game is coming up shortly after that. So this is whack -a number four right here. And I just need to keep resetting the screen and get four more. So coming up as soon as I go back, um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, there's a badge called Speedy Spin. And what that's going to let me do is uh, it's going to make the spin animation a lot faster, and it's going to go longer as well. So it speeds up the run by quite a bit. Because as you can see now, these spins are pretty short. Um, they're not very fast, and I have to jump quite a bit. Pretty much with movement in this game, you want to minimize jumping as much as possible. So Speedy Spin is going to help with that. I've got a $20 donation from Vic and Vivian. This year's AGDQ has been a blast, and the work everyone involved has put into this has been incredible. Paper Mario has been an inspiring game to us, and seeing it be played to aid in cancer prevention donations is even better. A close friend of ours has had cancer, and while has been treated and recovered, it was still a terrifying experience nonetheless. Here's to defeating cancer and saving Waka. Donation money also. <laughs> Sorry. Rip. Rip. Not happening. Uh, donation money also goes towards the Paper Mario cast poster prize drawn. I just want to say real quick, um, any of you out there, you don't have to specifically put your donations towards a prize. As long as you meet the minimum requirement with your donation, no matter what you, if you want to put it towards a donation incentive or whatever, you will be entered in the drawing, whether you want it or not. So. And again, the two prizes uh, for this run is uh, the Paper Mario cast poster donated by Croco Goat and the Super Paper Link donated by Gary Storkamp. And you guys can probably see on the ticker going across the top of the screen, if you go to speeddemosarchive.com, uh, you can see uh, pictures of all these wonderful prizes. And the minimum donation to get into that is $10. Okay, so right here coming up now is the badge shop. Uh, this is where I'm going to get Speedy Spin. So there are three badges that pop up on the screen, and there are four badges total. So there's a 75% chance that I'll get it. And I got nice. it in the middle there. All right. And I forgot I don't have coins yet, so. <laughs> 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 Different route. Anyway, um, the bat shop will reset if I go two screens away. So I'm only going one screen away right here, just to sell my whack -a bumps and get coins that I'm going to need later. So. If I was to go to another screen, um, I might accidentally reset it and that would possibly get rid of the speedy spin badge, so I want to obviously not do that. So I'm going to sell five of these right now. Um, with all these coins, I'm going to buy the speedy spin badge, and I'm also going to buy some stuff in the sewers. Um, yeah, there's, there's a life shroom and there's a repel gel that I'm going to get in the sewers, and both of them are going to be very useful throughout the run. Uh, like I was saying before, Items are probably the most important thing that I can get because obviously I'm going to be at a very low level and I won't be able to kill stuff as easily. So I'm going to equip it right now along with Power Bounce. And now the hardest trick of the game is coming up. It's called Blue House Skip. It is frame perfect and nearly pixel perfect. So hopefully I can get it. Dang.
Some confirmed worse than Pi. Pi got that trick the last or first try last uh, SGDQ. So, oh, I almost got it first try too, but the chokes. Anyway, um, so there's a pipe inside that blue house, and normally you're not supposed to be able to reach that until the end of chapter five. So by doing that, I essentially just skipped the entirety of chapters two, three, and four. Uh, there's a fight right here. This is where you're going to be starting to see a lot of power bouncing. Um, a perfect fight here would be 23 bounces on the first two turns. Alright, I got nine. So there are also things called power bounce caps, where the game will just stop you at certain points, and uh, even if you hit the action command perfectly, you won't be able to continue. So what that was right there is a cap. There's a very distinct animation to tell what it is. All right, I got capped again. So I'm just going to use his normal attack again right here, and he should be dead next turn. But basically, um, if you want to know if I'm getting capped or just missing, the animation is basically uh, Mario will either drop straight to the ground or he'll jump very far back. Um, if he jumps far back, that means I got capped. And if he drops straight to the ground like that, that means I missed it. So you might have noticed on the other two, he jumped really far back, which means the game just wouldn't let me do any more action commands. So now I'm in chapter five. So Blue House Skip saves uh, probably like 50 minutes in this category, actually. So it's a pretty big trick. Um, the other category, all cards, you would still use it, but it only saves a few minutes because uh, the only thing it would really do is let you get to chapter five sooner, other than um, riding a whale to get there. So right now I get to meet Colorado, um, and he's saying he wants to go in the volcano and stuff. And he's actually going to be getting in there with me. I'm going to be glitching inside there, and apparently he's going to be doing it too. <laughs> he's also going to be helping me out inside there, which you'll see in a little bit. Anyway, uh, these guys are all panicked because the Yoshi kids are missing. So I'm going to get the next partner, who is Sushi. And this is another partner that's... Uh, actually skippable, but required to beat the game. So I need to get sushi, otherwise I wouldn't be able to complete the game. I've got a $20 donation from Zykrul. Hey AGDQ, love all the amazing, what seem like nigh impossible tricks you can successfully pull off. The Metroid race and punch out blindfolds kept me on the edge of my seat. A, class mine, a classmate of mine lost his battle to melanoma a few years back at the age of 25. It's always tough to see someone go, especially from this vile disease, and so young. Thank you everyone, including the behind the scene crew who keeps things running smoothly and their sanity intact for, your take, for taking your time to support and spread the word of an amazing cause and making this event bigger and better every year. Congrats on reaching the 500K goal and let's go for 800k. All right, so during that, I just did a pretty crazy trick uh, called Yoshi Skip or, or Raf Skip. It's called Two Things. It was actually discovered by Flair. Um, pretty much what that allowed me to do is clip past a tree, which is a, a Japanese-only trick using Paracarry. It was actually fixed on the English version, so I, I guess they knew about it. But yeah, that allowed me to just uh, pretty much get out of bounds again, go around a loading zone, similar to Black Toad Skip, and then fall into the volcano. So right here, there's another small thing called first cycle, where if I'm fast enough, I'll be able to land on the platform coming up. All right, and I got it. So miss <laughs> missing that really isn't a huge deal. It wastes like 15 seconds, because you got to wait for the platform to come all the way back. So that's good that I got that. Um, so now what I'm going to do is i got to go get the Ultra Hammer, which is also required to beat the game. As you can see, there's a block on the right side there. You might have been able to see it. But um, yeah, I need that to get any further in the volcano. So there's another trick coming up right here that we just call Lava Skip, 
Uh, it's another very small time saver, but uh, it skips doing a block puzzle right here. And I failed it. All right, so I can try again, but this trick is also kind of precise, so. All right, I got it there. Okay, so something that probably a lot of people don't know is that you actually don't need to push two blocks here. You can, you can actually push one. As long as you're standing close to the edge, you can make that gap with parry carry. So that's what I did there. I only pushed one and then just parry carry across. And now I have the ultra hammer. So I'm gonna go back to where that ultra block was before and progress further into the volcano where you're gonna see a few more tricks coming up. Got a $10 donation from Deadmind13. It's been six years today since I lost my father. Hopefully this small amount helps someone else to not have to go through the same. Okay, so now that I'm through, um, Colorado's here too. Like, at the beginning of the volcano, I don't really know how he got in. I guess he did Yoshi Skip as well, but uh, yeah, he's here. So he's gonna help me with some stuff later, as I was mentioning. Um, but first I'm gonna drop down right here and I'm gonna hit my first upgrade block. What this does is give my partners more damage and an extra ability. So I'm gonna upgrade Bombette because uh, I'm gonna need her ability, which is called Power Bomb in Chapter 6. What it does is uh, it hits multiple enemies on the ground at once, and it does quite a bit of damage, so it's very useful coming up later in the game. But unfortunately, the fastest upgrade block I can get to is by dropping down there. So now I have to backtrack and go through here, and now I'm just go gonna go to the end of the volcano. Switch to Paragate right now because I'm going to need him right away for another trick coming up. So this uh, this room's pretty basic as well. I have to wait for a platform at the end. There's not much going on, but um, I would like to not get in an encounter with these lava bubbles, and I didn't. Okay, so I'm just going to stand right at the end and wait for the platform. Nothing I can really do here. There's no first cycle type trick here either. Uh, it's just impossible to make it there. So now I'm on here. I just got to wait to go across again, and then the next room is another trick which actually is, is uh, it's a bit bigger than it looks. Um, normally what you have to do in this room is there's a block at the end, which you have to push all the way across the room. But what I can do here is a trick called Flare Carry, which is also named after Flare. And uh, Para Carry right into this corner here. And I just trigger the loading zone and go straight through. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch to Bombette during this little cutscene, save frames, and I'm gonna follow Colorado into the next room and now he's gonna help me with a trick. So I'm getting the super shroom right now. I'm gonna need this later in chapter six. And now I'm gonna do what's called a lava prana skip by using uh, Colorado to clip out of bounds like that and land in the loading zone underneath the boss. So by doing that, I just completely skip the boss of chapter five. That trick probably, probably saves like five or six minutes. And now I'm at the end of the chapter. So chapter five is completely broken. Like there's, all I really do is uh, get the ultra hammer Upgrade Bombette, and then I'm out of there. Like, it's just filled with tricks. There's a lot of stuff going on. So, an interesting, an interesting thing with this game is um, the game is pretty much based off of triggers. So, if you manage to get further in the game and you hit one of those certain triggers, um, the game will think you're at that point. So, that's how I was able to get to Chapter 5 early and stuff. Um, and also, like, get inside the volcano and everything is there. So, now that I beat this chapter, um, normally throughout the game, as you beat the chapters, you, you get abilities called, uh, called Star Power. And um, pretty much each time you beat a chapter, you get one extra Star Power and you get a new ability from the Star Spirits. But uh, since I skipped the first four chapters, I didn't get them yet. But now that I beat Chapter 5, after this chapter, I'm actually going to have every single Star Power ability, as well as all the Star Power I need. So that's a cool way of, I guess, manipulating the triggers to uh, to my advantage. So there's a small peach cutscene right here. Um, it's one of the few that's in this category. But I have to go do a quiz right away. Uh, it's the only way to get through this. And it's going to give me the parasol for the next peach cutscene, which is also required. So the quiz is right here. And throughout this whole quiz, I don't even need to answer anything correctly. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to mash through the entire quiz and get some questions wrong, get some of them right. And actually, on the 10th question, I'm going to answer the wrong answer on purpose, which is number two. 
Uh, the reason for that is if I was just to mash through the whole quiz, I would actually win the prize. And winning the prize is slower because you have to get an extra item. So I'm going to purposely get the last question wrong. And that is going to skip getting the item. So yeah, first, uh, first nine questions I'm just mashing through. Last question is going to be number two. So if you have any donations or whatever, that was a pretty good time. I've got $10 from George. May RN Jesus be with you, Anatomy Z. I've got $50 from Randa. Hi, Randa here. I want to give a quick shout out to my friend Johnson who introduced this awesome community to me. Good luck to Anatomy Z and the final runners. $20 from Big Yan. Never really watched speedrunning, but stumbled across this and it's so entertaining. Well done to everyone involved. Got a $30 donation from Furret Turret. I've seen the game played dozens of times, but I am still giddy for this Paper Mario run. I've got a $100 donation from Mr. X. Thanks for the awesome speed runs, guys. A lot of my friends here at Blizzard are huge fans. Keep up the good work. All right, so now this cutscene is pretty much done. Um, I purposely lost the quiz, so I didn't get the item, but I did get the parasol, which you get no matter what. So that is gonna be useful later on, like I was saying, and uh, as soon as this ends, I'm gonna be heading to chapter six, but the thing is, Right now, I only have two of the flower seeds that are required. One of them you get after chapter five, and the other one is in chapter three, so I'm gonna have to make a quick detour to chapter three in order to get that last seed, and uh, that'll let me get to chapter six. But um, before I do that, I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna go back through the blue house again, and I'm also gonna buy some items from the guy that's inside the house, as well as unlock the door, so. I'm gonna need to go through the house a few times throughout the run, so I'm just gonna unlock it now. All right, so this cutscene's finally done. So I have to go over and I have to find the treasure that dropped after um, the volcano erupted, which is actually on the same screen as Sushi. So when I get that item, I'm gonna give it to Colorado, who is just uh, sitting right there, at least on the bottom of the screen. And he's gonna give me the third flower seed. And then after that, I'm just gonna get one more item and then I'm just gonna leave chapter five through the pipe that I opened up earlier. And that, do you skip the jam and jelly behind yep. the tree? Okay. Yeah, it's another small route change. Uh, there's an item behind the tree on the first, the first screen outside of the volcano. But uh, with this route, it's, it's more marathon safe, so I'm not gonna be getting it yet. Otherwise, I'm gonna have item problems later on. So I got the flower seed right there. I'm gonna switch to sushi, because I'm gonna need sushi. Actually, no, I'm not, because I'm going through the blue house. What am I doing? And uh, now I'm gonna go get a repel gel. So this is the um, first repel gel I'm getting. This is going to be very useful on Final Bowser. I'm going to be abusing these things as much as I can because they make me invincible for two turns. So it's a little bit slow. It's kind of spinning around with that fuzzy, but I got it now. Um, and now I'm just going to head back through the pipe, back through the blue house, and back to Toad Town and into Chapter 3. All right. Okay, going back in here and back the way I came. Normally you would actually swim across there, but since I have to buy items, I have to go back through the blue house. And that's only with my marathon route, so. It's a little bit different, and as you can probably tell, I'm a little bit off on the, uh, the marathon strats, but everything's fine up until this point. So this guy right here. Um, with all the coins I got earlier, I need to buy four items from him. I got a life shroom right there, which is very useful. Uh, a useless badge, a star piece, and another repel gel. So now that I have those, I'm gonna exit back through the blue house, and I can unlock it right now. So that way, um, there's a clip you can do later on that's easier, but uh, I'm not gonna need to do that now that the blue house is unlocked. So now I'm going to chapter three, spinning in place. <laughs> and uh, conveniently, the seed is very close to the beginning of this, um, the beginning of this forest. It's only like four screens in. So it's a little bit of a maze to get there, but I, I haven't memorized where it is. It's uh, not too hard to remember it. But the only thing that's kind of scary is this fuzzy right here. It's another narrow screen, so I gotta go around that guy, take my time. And one more screen away, that's gonna be the last seed, and then I can enter chapter six. All right, just over here. All 
Okay, so now that I have this, I'm gonna head back to Toten. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the screen where I did uh, log skip and black toad skip. And the entrance to chapter six is there. So I need to give all four seeds to the flower girl there, and it takes uh, about a minute or so. So if you have more donations, you need to get through. Sure. Now's a good time again. Yeah, I've got a $10 donation from Daniel James. It's 10 years to the day that my mom got all got the all clear after winning the battle with cancer. I'm, yeah. I'm donating so somebody else can have that same feeling of joy and clean bill of health. Please give this $10, do, $10 donation to Blue Glass's Choice. A huge thank you to all the, all the behind the scenes team for flawless coverage all week and to each and every runner for a wonderful community spirit and for bringing video gamers around the world together. AGDQ really is a blueprint for social media use on the internet. Okay, so now that this is finally open, um, I'm gonna go into chapter six. And unfortunately, this is the only chapter that we haven't really completely destroyed yet. Um, the way this chapter works is based off a lot of triggers, so I have to do most of the stuff in order because if I was to skip things, I wouldn't be able to actually complete the chapter. So um, a lot of this is pretty much just gonna be doing like basically a fast let's play. I just have to uh, go through all the stuff here and help everyone out, so. One of the more boring chapters, but yeah, we'll get through it. So anyway, um, first screen I need to go to is over here. And you'll notice I switched to Bombette already because I'm going to need her in the fights coming up. I also grabbed an item right there called, called a Stinky Herb, which restores 5 FP. I'm going to need that coming up right away too. So I need to talk to this flower, and she's mad because these moles are ruining her garden or whatever. So I need to kill all these moles. And I'm going to kill them in a specific order so that I level up near the end. And... Um, that's going to restore all my stats, including my star power. So I'm going to kill this one first. There's one mole right here. And they have 12 HP, so my hammer does 6, and Bombette's first ability also does 6, so he's going to die with this. All right, so the next fight coming up, um, it's a little bit different because there are multiple of them. So since I got the star power abilities from beating Chapter 5, I now can use all the abilities that I should have got earlier. So I'm going to use uh, what's called Star Storm. And this is a very strong ability. You're going to be seeing this a few times as well. It hits everything on the screen for 7 damage. So this and Bombat's new ability, like the upgraded ability, um, it's going to kill everything on the screen in one turn. Alright, but now that I'm down to 1 FP, um, the Power Bomb ability costs 6 FP, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat that Stinky Herb that I just I just got. That's going to give me 5, and that's going to put me back up to 6. So since I'm at a very low level, I get a lot of experience for these fights. Um, I'm at 67 star points right now. Normally, if you're doing a casual playthrough, you might get like somewhere between 10 or 20 uh, star points for doing this fight right here. But since I'm such a low level, I'm going to get around 40, so I'm going to level up off this fight. And by leveling, that's going to restore all my stats. It's going to restore my FP and my star power. So I used up pretty much everything I had for that fight. And now I level and get everything back. So I'm going to level FP again right here. So I'm going to need more of it coming up. And I'm going to do the last fight right here. So this fight, I could do the same thing. I could use Star Storm and Power Bomb again. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hammer instead. Uh, the reason for that is that there's only two enemies during this fight. And there are a few fights coming up later on where I also need to use Star Storm, and there are more enemies on those uh, on those fights. So this fight is unfortunately a little bit slower, but it's necessary to make the other ones faster. So this guy's dead, and now all the moles are cleared. Now I need to talk to this flower again, and this is going to give me the first, I guess, major item of this chapter that I need to complete it, and that's a bean. Alright. I also need to get a red berry right here because the way these gates work in this chapter, you need to give um, one of the flowers or whatever a specific colored berry depending on what color they are. So I grab that red berry there and now I'm going to go to the gate that has the red flower. So if I give him the berry, he's going to open the gate. Uh, this screen right here is actually one of the hardest screens in the game to dodge enemies. There's a B on this screen where if he first strikes you, he actually does six damage, which is pretty bad. So. 
fortunately I have some strats here that allow me to make these guys stop noticing me by spinning far enough away. And I go underneath the B there and get out safely. I need to go through that screen a few more times, so hopefully I'll get the same result each time I go through it. So now I have the yellow berry and I'm giving it to this guy right here. And I'm gonna need Paracarry coming up. So I'm gonna switch right now. And I can jump across these first few gaps right here. But I need to fly across the last two. So now I'm gonna meet the next flower right away. Um, now I'm gonna start like a bunch of fetch quests basically. Uh, this flower is gonna be upset because she's in a pond and there's no water. So I need to get what's called the water stone in order to get the water back here. But there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. Um, basically the person who has the water stone thinks it's pretty, doesn't wanna get rid of it, so on. Uh, so I need to find something to replace it. But first I need to go and find the water stone first. So basically right there I said I would go find it. So now I'm backtracking. I'm gonna get a blue berry right now, which I need coming up again. Gonna fly all the way back to the main screen. And going to the left side now, where there's gonna be a blue flower at the gate. I'll give this flower another berry, and it opens up this one. So now there's only two screens left that I haven't been to, but I'm gonna go to them later in the chapter. So this fight coming up is what we call the maze fight. Um, basically there are two Spinies and two Lakitus here. Um, I'm going to use Star Storm, but unfortunately since the Lakitus are in the air, Bombette's Power Bomb ability does not hit them. So what I'm going to do is just Shell Shot one of them, and uh, the fight will change slightly depending on what they do. Um, the Lakitu that's left will either spawn a Spiny, throw it down on the ground, or he will attack me directly. Um, spawn is, spawning a spiny is slightly slower, but uh, fortunately I got, a, I got a thunderbolt in chapter one, which is going to allow me to kill it really fast without using any extra FP or anything. So he's throwing down a spiny, so I'm going to use that thunderbolt I got, get rid of it, on the spiny, and then I'm going to shell shot the last Lakitu, and that's the fight. As you can see here again, I'm getting a ton of experience for every fight I do now, just because I'm such a low level. All right. Now I have to go through this small little maze right here, and at the end I'm going to find the water stone and another flower who wants something pretty to replace it. So if you have uh, more donations, again, it's another slow point right here. So. Cool. We've got a $20 donation from Sir Program. Been watching all week with whenever possible. Love what you guys do. Hats off to all the runners. Oh, We've got a $10 donation from George Orndorff. Thanks for everything you all do. Love to all runners, staff, and anyone else involved. Got a $25 donation from Charles O'Keefe. In memory of Darren Hutz, you speedrunners and announcers are doing a great job. Congratulations on a raging success. See you next year. All right, so I was a little bit scared talking to that flower because my game has actually crashed talking to that flower before. Uh, you might have noticed the screen froze for a second. So I was a little bit scared that that might have happened, but uh, I got lucky, I guess. It's only happened once before, but that would have, I guess, been marathon luck if it did happen again. So anyway, this flower right here, um, she's mad because the other flower won't give the water stone back. So she gives me another pretty flower, and I can take that back, and now I can get the water stone. On top of that, I also got the soil, which I'm going to use later to plant the bean. So the only thing left I need now is the water, which I'm going to get when I give the water stone to the last flower. So again, more backtracking. Um, I have to go all the way back through this maze and then all the way back to the uh, water section. And then after that, I'm going to meet, I guess, our next partner, who's Lackluster. And he's a very interesting partner because he can help with a lot of tricks, actually, but you're going to be you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, coming up in chapter 7 and 8. All right, so now I have the water stone. Got to head all the way back. It's going to take a little bit to get there again, so uh, not much to talk about. So if you have more donations you want to get through, go for it. I've got a $50 donation from William Dowd. My mother is now a little more than 10 years cancer-free due to early detection. 
Thanks for doing this, guys. Donation goes to Reader's Choice. And I just want to again, once again remind you guys who we are. We're a little over an hour into Paper Mario. And we are Speed Demos Archive and Speed Runs Live, coming together to put on Awesome Games Done Quick 2014, where we are beating relatively quickly, at least, uh, some of your favorite and least favorite video games of all time. And right now, we got Anatomy Z running through Paper Mario, and we are raising money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. You guys have raised, well, how much have you raised? You guys have raised $692,109. I want to thank you all for that. We're coming up closer and closer on our $750,000 goal. And I say let's just blow right past that because at $800,000, Bonesaw will be leading us in the to earn dance. Okay, so now this cutscene is finally over. Um, I finally got the water, which I need to complete the chapter as well. So what I'm going to do here is get a bubble berry, which is going to let me get to the next section of this chapter. Um, there's a unique plant coming up where if you give them, bubble, if you give them a bubble berry, um, you can pretty much jump inside the bubble and fly all the way to the end of the screen over some spikes that you normally can't get across, until I get my next partner anyway. So I'm gonna go there now, but before I do, I'm gonna save here just in case because this screen can be kind of scary. And so can the next boss fight. Um, basically at the end of the screen, there's a bee that just sits there waiting. Um, if he first strikes me, that's six damage instantly. And if I fail to run away or something, that's uh, basically I'm dead and I'm gonna use a life stream. So I don't, wanna, I don't want that to happen. So that's why I saved right there just in case. It's pretty rare that he will actually first strike you, but it can happen, so just being safe. So this thing pushes me across, and hopefully this bee does not notice me. All right, I'm good. So I'm going to grab an item right here called a shooting star, which I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be using until Final Bowser, actually, but basically what it does is it does six damage to everything on the screen, and I'm going to be using a lot of those as well. So there's a rock inside here that I need to hit, so I'm going to drop one inside there and go up here. And I need to switch my badges around and heal up right before this next fight, so I'm going to do that right now. Also pull up Paracarry and heal up. So the next fight is a little bit scary because um, the, the boss does four damage normally, which is three damage blocked. So I'm at 10 HP, so if I block all three attacks, I will live with one HP. If not, um, basically I'm just gonna die and use a life stream, which isn't the end of the world, but I mean, this would be a very bad boss to uh, use a life stream on. So hopefully I'm able to get all the blocks here. And other than that, this is a pretty simple fight. I'm just gonna be using power jump and shell shot repeatedly until he's dead. I got the first one. It's good. More of the same. Got the second one and one more and I'll be able to live here. That would be very nice. Okay, good. So uh, now I'm gonna whack it again. This is going to refill everything because I just used all my FP and I have 1 HP, so just going to use that now. And uh, blocks from here on out don't really matter. I'm going to block anyway, just because. But uh, yeah, should be two more turns and this guy will be dead. And last turn right here. And this guy's dead. So now this guy right here, named Lackluster, um, he's gonna join my party now. Um, and he's gonna be very useful later on, like I was saying. So I just gotta talk to him and his girlfriend or whatever right here real quick. 
and then he's going to join my party. And then from here, uh, normally what you would do is you would just go to the next section, the only section I haven't been to, which is the top right one, and you would just use Lackluster and continue from there. But um, there's a block puzzle on that screen. And since I haven't been to chapter three yet, I don't have any super boots or anything, so I actually can't solve the block puzzle. So um, right here, I'm gonna eat this super shroom right now that I grabbed in chapter five. I wanna be at full HP for the next fight, preferably. And what I actually have to do since I don't have the boots is I have to go into the sewers and I'm gonna go get the ultra boots, which you're, I guess, not supposed to get until after uh, chapter six, but there's nothing stopping you from getting them now. So I'm just gonna go there and do that. And that'll allow me to solve the block puzzle coming up. So just a quick detour, but there's nothing I can really do. Um, there's no way to skip the block puzzle. And the ultra boots are gonna be required anyway, so. So I, I unlocked the blue house earlier, so I gotta go back in here. And this section of the game is kind of hard because there's a lot of enemies in the sewers right here. Um, pretty easy to get into an encounter. I have to go there and I have to go all the way back through like half a dozen enemies. So hopefully I won't get hit by anything here, but it's a little bit scary. The screen's relatively easy. And now that I have lackluster, I can go across these spikes and into this next pipe. That screen is probably the scariest one. I have to go back through it still, but that was good. Um, now I break this, and these are the Ultra Boots right here. Which, now that I have the Ultra Boots, I can do a Stomp Attack, which I didn't need to do right there. It's saving frames. But uh, I'll use it on this screen right here, and you can see what it does. I'm going to drag this Koopa away right here, because I want a Life Shroom that's in the middle of the room. Right there. So it allows me to get, get more height on my jump, which I'm gonna be using for a trick later on, actually. So back through this screen, and there's a maple right here that I also want, a maple syrup. Um, that refills 10 FP. I'm gonna be using that in chapter seven later. And this is the last screen I have to get back through. All right, so I made it through everything. That was, that was good. And now I also want the shooting star right here for later on. So to get to chapter seven, um, I need to hit these blocks. I'm just gonna do that right now. Even though I can't get there yet, there's actually no way to get through that blue door up there um, other than completing the chapter and talking to Merlon. So normally in a run, this is where I would unlock the blue house, but uh, since I had to buy extra items, it's already unlocked. So I just go straight through it and I'm heading back into chapter six. So now that I have the Ultra Boots, um, I'm gonna go to that block puzzle and I'm gonna be able to complete it. And after that, it's gonna lead us into the last fight of the chapter other than the boss. And during that fight, I'm gonna level up again, which is very convenient because it's right before the boss and it's gonna refill all my stats, so I don't need to do anything extra. I've got a $50 donation from Jorich, I've lost my uncle and aunt to cancer and I love watching speedruns. What does that create? That's right, a donation that should have been made sooner. Leaving, le loving the Paper Mario run. Keep it up and good luck. Thank you very much. And I've also got a $50 donation from the gamer couple. Hey, we haven't lost anybody to cancer, but we'd like to keep it that way. Keep up all the great work. You guys are amazing. All right, so I grabbed a, uh I grabbed what's called a Thunder Rage on the screen right before this. I'm gonna use it on this fight. It does five damage to everything. And unfortunately, with all these enemies on the screen, there's no way I can kill them in one turn. So I'm just gonna do nothing with Lackluster. Uh, these blocks here don't matter either. Uh, I'm just gonna block them anyway. But uh, these guys can only do a total of nine damage if everything is unblocked. So I have 10 HP, so I'd live no matter what. So on this next turn now, I'm just gonna use Star Storm again. And this is why I needed to not Star Storm on that mole fight earlier. Um, if I would have used it, I wouldn't have had enough star power to use it right here. So that's gonna kill all these guys. And with this level up, I'm gonna level up BP. Cause I'm gonna get a badge coming up right away called uh, Super Jump Charge, which is gonna be abused on pretty much every fight from here on out other than Final Bowser. 
So now I have to break the machine right here, and this is pretty much the last thing in the chapter other than the boss. All right, so now I have, I have all three things I need to get to the top of the chapter. Um, now the sun is gonna be happy right here. I wouldn't be able to plant the seed if, uh, if the sun wasn't in the sky, so that's why I needed to destroy that machine. Because the machine actually created clouds, so the sun uh, couldn't go in the sky and it was just sitting on that platform, unable to do anything. So now everyone's all happy and stuff. And uh, yeah, now I'm heading back to the middle screen for the last time and I'm gonna go into, I guess the scariest boss of this category, um, called Huff and Puff. Um, overall, he's not a very difficult boss, but what he does have is a bunch of RNG. Um, I mentioned Power Bounce Caps earlier, and Power Bounce Caps have a huge role on this fight because uh, I need a certain number of bounces to kill Huff in one cycle, and if I don't get them, I'm gonna die extra times and I'm gonna waste a lot of time, so it's not really under my control. Uh, I'll do what I can, but caps on this fight range between, I think, three and eight. Three being extremely unlucky. Um, four and five are probably most common. And a six, which would be a perfect fight, is uh, not as uncommon as a three, but they're pretty uncommon. So I'm hoping for at least a five. That would be good. This is also going to demonstrate uh, the badge I got earlier in the run called Close Call. What I'm going to do is, uh, since I already have it equipped, um, I'm going to purposely get into danger on this fight by not blocking attacks. And with that, hopefully Huff will miss at least one of his attacks. If he misses one, um, that's going to save me from dying early on in the fight. But if it doesn't work, that's, that's fine. I'm going to lose a life shroom. Almost guaranteed on this fight anyway. But uh, there's potential that I could lose two life shrooms in this fight, which would be bad. I do have three, but yeah, if I get unlucky... Uh, not all that I can do about it. So hopefully with uh, with any luck, I'll make it out of this fight with at least two life shrooms. I'd be fine with losing one. So Super Jump Charge is hidden up on this cloud over here. Probably not a lot of people found out about this either. It's kind of kind of out of the way. You wouldn't really think to go up here, I guess. Um, so yeah, basically when I, when I get this badge, um, I get an ability that increases my jump attack by three each time I use it. And it stacks, so um, I'm gonna be pretty much spamming this ability and then I'm gonna be putting it all into one power bounce. And with that, I'm gonna be able to kill pretty much every single boss in one turn when I actually do finally power bounce. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for the first three turns. I'm just gonna be charging up, I'm gonna be letting him attack me and doing nothing with my partner. The reason for that is because if I attack this guy, um, he spawns these little babies, which are going to do extra damage to me, so I don't want to do any damage with my partner. I'm going to purposely not block this attack. Now I'm in danger. So from here, I'm hoping that Close Call works on at least one of these attacks coming up, and that'll save a life shroom. So first is the wind attack. Hopefully this misses, and it didn't miss, so this is fine. Um, I pretty much just have to make sure I don't die. There's no way I can prevent myself from dying if uh, both attacks hit. So I'm just gonna mash to make sure I don't die and charge one more time. Hopefully this misses now, which it did, perfect. Okay, so now I need at least a four bounce right here to be able to win this fight. All right, I got a five, that's pretty good. So that's, I guess, like the second best case scenario. Um, I'm gonna be able to kill him on the next turn, I believe. But as you can see, now that I hit him, he has these babies out. So um, I'm just gonna let them kill me. There's actually no way I can mash them off, but yeah, they're gonna kill me and Huff is actually gonna do nothing on this turn because of that. Um, past the fourth turn, he has this ability where he charges up and does a lot of extra damage, but he doesn't do that if you actually die on that turn. So dying to those babies is really convenient because he's not gonna charge up. So now I'm gonna use Star Storm right here and I have an extra 10 damage for this turn, which should kill him. I'm not 100% on the math, but I'm uh, pretty sure this kills. If not, uh, I'm just gonna have to mash the babies off and uh, he will be dead next turn. But looks like he is dead from this Star Storm, so. That was a pretty good fight. That was uh, 
best, I guess the best I could have hoped for for a marathon run. Um, if I was doing actual attempts, I would have lost probably 30 or 40 seconds right there compared to a six or a seven bounce, which is, uh, I guess, the most optimal. Six is pretty good, but seven is, seven is perfect. It's about three seconds faster than a six. So now that that's done, I'm done chapter six, and I'm heading on to chapter seven next. But first, I have to do another peach cutscene where basically I'm going to be using the parasol I got in chapter five and um, pretending to be the guards around the castle in order to get all the way to the end of the castle and get, uh, I guess, extra information for Mario. So not much going on. So if you want, want to do some donations again, it's a good time. Sure. I've got a $10 donation from Christina Cormier. I'm loving this Paper Mario run. Hoping to get that Paper Mario cast poster, happy face. Thanks to all the runners and everyone behind the scenes for making AGDQ possible. I've got a $50 donation from, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, German uh, Danielson. Making a third donation, happy face. Hopefully this will be red, happy face. Been watching since AGDQ 2013, late bloomer, and wanting to get into speedrunning myself, but we'll have to make time. But I digress. Thank you for all you are doing. Have a Freddie Mercury. You restore my faith in humanity. And again, I want to thank you guys so much. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you can probably get lost in just how many donations we've taken in. But um, again, over $692,000. Uh, coming up on $700,000. That's absolutely incredible. Last year we raised $450,000, and we've still got a good... 12, 13 hours worth of good gaming for you. So let's see how far we can push that. I've also got a $10 donation from Cake Sphere. Love to watch you guys playing for a good cause. My 91 years young grandpa is living with cancer. And while I'm pretty sure he doesn't know what video games are, I'm sure he'd love you guys coming together to entertain us. Really enjoying Paper Mario. Keep up the good work all. All right, so I go through the first half of this cutscene, and earlier the guard wanted this club to come because he's supposed to be doing guard duty or something. So he is sleeping outside, sleeping on the job. So I went out, and now I'm pretending to be this club. So that's going to let me get further into the castle and get some information. So after this chapter now, um, you're going to start seeing a lot more glitches coming up again in Chapter 7. There are a few there, and then there's uh, quite a few clips in Chapter 8 as well. Chapter 6 is pretty stale in that regard. It's because, like I was saying before, it's, uh, it's very linear, and there's no real way to break it because of the triggers involved. But yeah, uh, you'll be seeing some crazy stuff coming up. Anyway, I mean, there's, there's still like another minute or so of cutscenes if you've got something you want to... Sure, sure, sure. Um, also, I want to plug you guys on the prizes we've got. Um, I just want to give a real quick shout out to everyone who has donated prizes. Um, it's the commentary this year has been absolutely amazing. A great job to Anatomy Z and all the runners and all the couch commentary. It's been hard to really appreciate everyone who's been able to contribute to this. Um, so I'd like to actually just give a quick round of applause to everyone who's donated prizes. Um, partic uh, for again for the length of this game, uh, which you got about another what hour twenty left in this run probably. Uh, what's my time at by the way? You're at one. 125. What's that? One twenty-five. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's another hour or so. About another hour or so, uh, and if you guys get in a minimum ten-dollar donation during this uh, during this game, then you will be entered into the drawings for either the Paper Mario cast poster, again donated by Croco Goat, or the Super Paper Link donated by Gary Storkamp. And you can see pictures of all of those, or I think I think all of them, uh, if you go to our website, speeddemosarchive.com, and check the ticker at the top of the screen. Okay, so now I need to go to chapter seven. So the only way to do that I believe I mentioned it before, but I need to talk to Merlin right now. Otherwise, that blue door in the sewers, it's not going to open. So I need to go through this really short cutscene. And this guy basically wants me to come to his town and stuff and save him, but I'm not even going to see him from here on out. 
going to be skipping him completely. So now I'm heading back to the sewers and I'm going to go to chapter 7. Same way, through the blue house. And I'm going to be using those blocks that I hit just a little while ago in order to get to that uh, blue door. And since I talked to Merlin, it is now unlocked. And there's just like one more pipe right here. And now I'm in chapter seven. So this chapter is gonna start off a little bit slow, I guess. Um, there's one clip right at the beginning. Um, this is called a lackluster clip. I'm basically gonna clip inside of a house right here by standing at a uh, specific angle on the side of the house. And it lets me clip inside like that. Normally I'd have to get a key and unlock it, but now I'm gonna navigate my way to the top and find a trampoline inside the house that's gonna let me get out. And now I'm gonna go inside here. And as a side effect of that glitch, um, this house is gonna be completely black. I can't see anything. Normally you'd be able to if you did, if you did everything here the intended way, but uh, since I clipped inside, the house is just completely black. So what's actually going on here is there's like a, there's a murder case. Um, everyone thinks, I believe it's the mayor got murdered or something. So this guy right here is gonna help me, uh, he's gonna help me solve the case. So now I'm just heading over to the mayor's house. On this screen right here. So I gotta wait for him to go inside. So while he's going inside, I'm gonna switch, switch my partners. One of the only places where you can do that. And one thing I forgot to mention uh, earlier in the run, you're gonna notice that the game is lagging quite a bit at points, and that is actually VC only. Um, the N64 version is a lot more, uh, it's a lot better in that regard. It doesn't lag much at all. Uh, VC is very bad for whatever reason, but it still turns out that VC is faster just because of the loading zones in the game. But um, it would be a lot faster if not for the lag in this game, but the lag kind of catches N64 up a little bit, but. Uh, VC in this game is, in this category, is probably 30 to 45 seconds faster than N64, or something like that. No one really knows because it's, it's really hard to time lag. So we just kind of have estimates. But yeah, if you notice any lag, um, that's just because of the VC version. There's nothing I can do about it. That's how the game is. So anyway, it turns out this guy wasn't dead. And now I'm going to be able to exit the village, which I'm going to do in a very uh, cool way, I guess as you'll see in a second. Um, I'm gonna be doing a glitch called, what we call a sushi glitch, <laughs> where, uh, well, I'll just, I'll let it speak for itself when I do it. Coming up right here on this dock. All right, <laughs> so now I'm swimming on land, and this is gonna allow me to skip a lot of stuff in this chapter. Um, first, I need to fight Junior Troopa again. This fight is a little bit safer than Huff, but it's still kind of dangerous. Uh, I believe I need a five bounce in this fight. Blocks aren't important at all, though. So, same thing as last fight. I'm just going to start by charging up. Going to do a little bit of extra damage with Sushi right here. And one thing that's very important, um, with the sushi glitch activated, I can't switch my partner, otherwise the glitch will deactivate, which I'm gonna be using later on. But for now, I need to make sure I keep sushi out, otherwise um, the glitch will deactivate and I need to go all the way back and do it again. So dying right here is fine. Uh, this is part of the route, but I actually got a close call, which is good. It's gonna save my life stream for now, so. Probably gonna get hit on this turn again. So I'm gonna die right here, probably. And it's completely fine, it's part of the route. Wow. <laughs> All right. That so, uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. And he's dead. All right, so that was, I guess that is a perfect fight right there. I've never gotten that before, but yeah, I got super lucky. <laughs> All right. 
So now as you'll see, as I enter the screen, the glitch reactivates. So normally what you have to do is you have to um, give some items to these snowmen and they open up a path. But instead I'm just going to swim underneath this wall and trigger a loading zone right behind here. So that just saved a ton of time right there. There's a lot of uh, side stuff you have to do in this chapter. So I'm swimming out of bounds right now and what I'm going to do is get in an encounter intentionally. And what that does is it, uh, it cancels the glitch for the time being. And the reason I want to do that is because it's faster to just run to the end of the screen rather than uh, swimming to the end. It's very slow to go upstairs during this glitch, so it's worth the time to get in that encounter on purpose and just spin all the way to the end. And the glitch will reactivate once again. So I'm going to swim out of bounds again right here. And this will skip some more stuff involving this switch right here. Normally you'd have to hit it and do another battle, but uh, Sushi Glitch skips all of that. So I swim up the stairs and now I'm going to get into another encounter right here, but this time I want to deactivate the glitch. So I'm going to run first of all. And I'm going to upgrade Paracare right here. So um, if I was to change partners normally, I would actually soft lock on this screen. Uh, I would just get stuck, unable to move. But if you do get an upgrade block, for whatever reason you don't soft lock. So I'm upgrading Paracare and now that Sushi isn't out, um, the glitch will deactivate and I'll be able to walk normally again. So on the next screen, there's another major trick coming up. Um, I guess not major, but it looks really cool. It saves about a minute, it's called Staircase Skip. Um, this is one of the more risky tricks in the whole run. You can actually soft lock your game if you do this incorrectly, so hopefully I do not do that. Oh. All right, so what I'm trying to do is clip inside this wall, first of all, and then I'm gonna fall to the top floor and go all the way around this entire screen to the palace. All right, so I got to the top. Now I need to land on the edge of the world again right here, which I did, and that gets me up here. Now I need to get the Mega Jump badge before I go any further. So I'm going to fall down here, oh. and what? What? <laughs> oh. All right, so. That's yeah. new, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I guess I have to do that again. I somehow triggered that loading zone while I was falling, so I gotta do everything again. Wow, that was, uh, seeing a lot of crazy stuff this run. <laughs> but unfortunately, because that wastes some time. So I'm gonna fall up again, try to get this again. Hopefully, I get it. I missed it now, so I gotta try again. Yeah, I'm going to take this a little bit uh, slower, I guess, because I don't want that to happen again. Fall way over there. I'm getting Mega Jump, and now I'm going to fall back up in that exact same spot. And that should be fine. Yeah, now I'm on the top floor again. And now I can enter the palace. So the palace is kind of like Chapter 6. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you need a lot of keys to get through this chapter, and there's no real way to skip them. So, unfortunately, like Chapter 6, I have to do everything in order for the most part. Get all these keys, kill pretty much every fight, and uh, yeah, get to the end. There's one small trick inside here, a little time saver that I'll be able to do. Other than that, not much. So I got the first key, and now I need to raise the floor right here. Um, pretty much, I guess, the gimmick with this with this dungeon is what you do on one side of the dungeon mirrors the other side. So um, if anything I do, like breaking the floor or something like that, if I do it on, on one side, it'll also do it on the other. The only exception is this right here, blowing up the wall. For whatever reason, it doesn't blow up the other side. So I need to do that myself. And there's a fight right here with some Duple Ghosts. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to jump on him first. Just one jump, going to miss the action command on purpose. And that's just kind of a safety precaution right there. Uh, they have 15 HP. So now that guy has 6 HP left, so I can kill him with one more power bomb. Uh, something that's interesting about these guys, though, is that if they transform like this guy did, you can actually just kill them instantly with power bomb. So even though I did less damage to that back guy, you'll see he just explodes, even though I didn't do enough damage to kill him normally. There's going to be another fight in Chapter 8 where I'm going to be doing pretty much the same thing. But uh, I'm not going to be attacking with Mario on the first turn, and I'm going to be hoping that some of them transform. 
Alright, so this is what I was talking about earlier, about everything being mirrored. So there's this um, stuff on the ground right here that I need to break. So I broke it, and now I'm just going to head back to the other side. And now that I did that, there's going to be a hole over there. It's going to let me drop down. And that is where the next key is going to be located. So I'm going to be doing stuff similar to that um, throughout the whole dungeon, I guess. Um, including fights that are going to remove stuff later. So now, as you can see, there's a hole where the X was before. And I can go inside here. Now, there's another little mini game right here. Um, I have to find the correct bombette, which is always the second one from the right. So I, I just have to hit all the other ones with a hammer, and then uh, I can go further. If I try to run away or something, they'll actually grab me, so I have to do this. However, with the other one coming up, it's going to be something similar with Cooper, and there's a trick I can actually do to skip them, so you'll see that in about uh, five minutes or so. All right, so now that's done, and now I can go in here, and this is going to be the next key to get further. All right, so I'm going to go all the way back to that main room again, and I'm going to lower the floor this time, because the other key is on the bottom floor. I think it's the bottom anyway. Pretty sure I went up, but yeah. Uh, yep, lowering the floor, so. Going this way now, and now there's gonna be a few fights. Uh, most of which are pretty easy. As you can see, I already have Bombad out, so I, I'm guessing you can all assume what's coming next. But first, I'm gonna eat this maple. I'm gonna need the FP for the fights coming up. Okay, so these fights get, I guess, progressively harder, supposed to anyway. So this first fight is one Clubba and one Magic Koopa. So an interesting thing about this fight is that if I just kill the Clubba by himself, um, the Magic Koopa will just run away. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm killing the Clubba because it's faster and this guy just runs away. So that fight's done. Um, the next fight now, it's gonna be two Clubbas and one Magic Koopa again. So there's just gonna be more Clubbas the more and more I go. Except now, I'm just going to be using Star Storm and Power Bomb like I was in, on the mole fights in Chapter 6. So this is just a really easy way to clear everything on the screen. Um, I believe they all have 12 health, so this is doing more than what I need. And after all these fights are done, I'm going to level up again. Even though I'm at 39 experience right now, I'm going to be getting a ton from these fights. Alright, yeah, so I'm at 68 right now. Last one's going to be about 40 or something. And same thing here, just Star Storm and Power Bomb. So you might have noticed in the background as I was killing these guys, um, each time I kill one of the clubbas, there's a statue in the background that disappears. So these fights are required to, uh, like, you have to do them, otherwise uh, you can't get past the other side. And you'll be able to see that on the last one here if you didn't notice that. But anyway, this is where the route gets a little bit crazy compared to all cards. If you saw that at SGDQ, you'll notice that I never leveled up HP because you didn't need to. But however, in any percent, um, considering we get very few items in this category and, and it's pretty tough to uh, stay alive on some of the fights, we actually level up HP twice throughout the route. So my first level up is going to be right there because I need the HP for Crystal King, which is the next boss. So there's a door right there, which means there's a hole right here. And I'm going to get this badge called Triple Dip, which is going to be very useful on Final Bowser. So I'm just going to drop on that here, go around to the other side, and progress further. I got around that guy just fine. And now this is where the trick of the, uh, of the palace is. This is called Cooper Skip. Like I was saying before, um, it's pretty much the same thing as the Bombette thing. The I gotta find the real Cooper. So, <laughs> I mean, pretty tough, but uh, I mean, I'm just gonna skip this instead. It saves about 15 seconds if I get it first try, but it's pretty precise, so I have a very weird setup I do. And I got it, okay. So that trick, there's like, I think it's like two pixels or something that you can actually do it on. Uh, the setup I do is very weird, but it works, so. Anyway, now I'm going to the other side, and this is gonna be the same thing as before. I'm gonna push a statue in this room, 
And what that's going to do is, is it's going to open up a hole on the other side again, which I need for a key. So I'm, gonna, I'm getting that gem and jelly right there, which I need for the Crystal King fight coming up. And I push that block out of the way without falling, which is good. Save some time. And I open up that hole when I pushed it, meaning the other side now has a hole as well. Which you'll see on this screen. And it is a very big statue, so I wouldn't have been able to push that one. So I had to push the small one first. So I'm just going to lure this guy over here, spin around him. And the last key is right here. So now we're pretty much at the end of the palace. I'm just going to backtrack to where I just was. And there's a small puzzle I need to solve. And uh, then it's going to be the end. I'm, and I'm going to fight Crystal King, who is actually probably the easiest boss fight in this, uh, in this category. Um, he's going to do nine attacks throughout the fight. I need to block four of them. If I block four, I'll live. Um, any more, if I block any more than four, it doesn't matter. But if I block less than four, I will die and use a life shroom. But since I got super lucky earlier in the run, that's not going to be a huge deal. However, um, I do need at least a four bounce on this fight. If I don't get a four bounce, there's a chance that he can actually heal himself. So I'm going to be saving before this fight in the off chance that that does happen, which it can because a three cap for him does exist as well. And yeah, hopefully with any luck. I should be fine on this fight. So, puzzle right there. I just have to make them face the correct um, direction and push them all onto the switches. And the stairs lower right here. I'm just gonna save right here. And now I am on the Crystal King fight. So this guy, I believe, has 70 HP, but it doesn't matter that much because, again, I'm just gonna charge the entire fight and kill him in one turn. So the only thing I'm really worried about are the blocks. Um, just four and I'm fine. I'm probably just gonna try to block everything just because. But um, I'm gonna use a different ability right here. This ability I'm using right now is called Chill Out. And what this does is, is it lowers all damage that enemies do by three. So since Crystal King attacks with these little, um, these little snow bits or whatever, it's gonna lower the attack damage of all of them. Which means that instead of hitting me for four each time, they're gonna be hitting me for one. So if I blocked, it would do no damage. And I blocked all three, which is good. So I need one more block for the rest of the fight. And I'm good. But for now, I'm just going to start charging up and do damage with Paracarry when I can. His attack is very fast, as you might have noticed. So I'm going to be using him on every boss fight from here on out. Charging again. And hopefully, I'll get at least one block right here. And that means I'll live until I have to bounce. Which I did, okay. <laughs> so now um, I need to eat this gem and jelly, which I just picked up because I need more FP to charge. More shell shots, and now this guy's, uh, his chill out debuff or whatever is gonna fade. So now he's gonna actually start doing damage to me, but since I blocked enough attacks, it's not gonna be enough to kill me. So another charge right here. Another shell shot, and what I do here doesn't matter, I'm just gonna block them anyway. Or miss one, fine. One more charge, and he's gonna summon bits again. And on this next turn, before I get attacked and killed, I'm gonna bounce. So I need a four here, so hopefully I do not get three tap because that would be very bad. All right, I got four, and I'm just gonna stop on that, don't need any more damage and he's dead, and I get a ton of experience for that. So, like I was saying, pretty easy fight, um, but you can get very unlucky and get three cap. This actually never happened to me before, but I've seen it happen to other, other runners of the game. So up until this point, I've had pretty good, uh, pretty good luck on caps and everything else, like close call as well. Um, this is probably, I guess, better than average luck throughout this run so far, but there are a few fights coming up where I'm gonna need more luck. Hopefully, I'll get lucky there as well. Anyway, this chapter is done, and there's another cutscene coming up, another peach scene, which I don't have to do anything in, but it's a good time for donations again. I've got $10 from Yo Chong. Awesome commentary, Nat. Let's get to 700K.
got a $20 donation from Andrew uh, Fogla. I'm sorry. AGDQ is one of my favorite weeks of the year. The runs are great. The couch commentary is fun, even for someone who has rarely attempted a speed run. And all the donating is infectious. Thanks another, thanks another great marathon drive. I've got a $10 donation from mm, Tetra Hydrin. Hello everyone at the AGDQs. You guys are doing amazing things for an amazing cause. Keep up the great work, and I wish Anatomy Z the best of luck on the run. $50 from Yoshiality. I've been watching as much as I can all week. You guys have fun, you guys have put on an amazing event. Here's hoping for many more great events in the future. Cosmos Wind Waker run, hi! Got a $10 donation from Spancer. Both my grandfather and my aunt died to cancer. Therefore, I felt obliged to donate at least a little bit while my favorite N64 game is played. Thanks for all those awesome runs so far. A $150 donation from Pyre. I love what everyone's doing. Blindfolded Punch-Out was amazing. Keep up the good work and good luck on Bowser. Got a $100 donation from Aaron Horton. Here's your money. Now stop sitting around playing video games and do something useful like, I don't know, raising money for cancer research or something. <laughs> you got it. All right, so now chapter seven's done, so I'm just gonna head back to uh, Toad Town and start chapter eight. But first I'm gonna grab some items on the way there that I'm gonna need for the fights coming up. So if I was to grab these items on the way to chapter seven, I would actually just lock myself out because those, uh, those walls would close. But I can grab them on the way back with uh, no punishment, really. So I just gotta spin through everything here. That was good. Sometimes uh, those guys can be pretty dangerous if they hit you. And this is all the stuff that I was supposed to do normally on the uh, on the way in, but since I had the sushi glitch, I just was able to skip all this stuff. So there's a repel gel behind this tree right here. This is the third one I'm getting. And that will be the last one that I need. That was good as well. So just going back the exact same way I came in, going through the Blue House and back to Toad Town. I'm actually gonna go back to Shooting Star Summit where I met the Star Spirits originally and they're gonna carry me up to chapter eight. We've got a $75 donation from Co from Covet. My thanks goes to everyone involved for setting up another excellent GDQ. It was discovered that I have a genetic defect that makes me high risk for cancers, and I am now being screened constantly. Thanks to fundraisers like this, my life is much more secure. Let's continue to smash video games and make more breakthroughs in cancer research. Got a $10 donation from Sonia Davis. Keep up the good work. Paper Mario is amazing. Getting ready for that Cosmo hype. I've got $10 from, I'm sorry, Toon uh, Kujper. Dear runners, stop ruining my childhood. But in all seriousness, thanks to everyone for what you are doing. Much love from the Netherlands. Got a $30 donation from uh, Proce Quinell. Hi everyone, I've been aware of the speedrunning community and its charity work since just after last year's AGDQ, and I'm really enjoying the positive attitude you bring to the otherwise hostile and competitive gaming scene. Thank you for raising money for a good cause and really entertaining me while, while doing it. Smooch. Okay, so now I'm on my way to chapter eight. Um, I'm gonna do a similar strategy on these enemies right here. Since the screen is so narrow, this is uh, very similar to the strategy I was using on that one screen in Chapter 6, if you remember. Basically, I'm getting them to notice me, and then I'm spinning away quickly so they, uh, they get confused, and that allows me to just spin straight past them. So while I'm here, I need to buy another Shooting Star. Normally, I would get it uh, earlier in the run, but since I have an extra Repel Gel and stuff, um, I wasn't able to get it because of item problems. So I'm going to get rid of one of my Life Streams right now. It's the only thing I can get rid of. And didn't buy this shooting enough, star. Did you? <laughs> What's that? You didn't die enough, I guess. Yeah, like <laughs> I got I got so lucky with close calls, like I was expecting it to die more, but 
That's good, I guess. Anyway, so that's all I needed from that shop. And now I'm going to head up to, I guess, the actual chapter 8, which is Bowser's Castle. So there's another cutscene right here. Um, basically, I'm getting like a space boat thing and getting sent up to chapter 8 again. So another good time for donations. Like, all right. I've got a $10 donation from Chucky Doris. AGDQ is so much fun. I started watching last year, and you guys influenced me to try my own hand at speedrunning Mirror's Edge. Thank you for those endless hours of entertainment and playing for such a great cause. I've got a $20 donation from Almost Dr. Kayla. This is my first year watching. I lost my dad to lymphoma five years ago this week. He would have loved everything about this. Down with cancer, up with AGDQ. We've got a $20 donation from Derek Hartley. It's been fun seeing all my precious childhood games being broken and destroyed. Thanks to everyone for putting this together. Thank you, Derek. I've got a $55 donation from Brent Stevens. Thanks for all the great runs. I've loved watching you break games all week while sitting on my couch with Mono. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at that. Okay, I, I couldn't decide on what to donate to, but now I know. Put this towards the having the guy on the couch in the long sleeve shirt unbutton his top button. <laughs> You're sitting on a couch, time to loosen up a bit. All right, all right. It's been hot in here with Bosby. <laughs> $55 per button, sweet. All right, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how long that goes. I'll see. <laughs> How much? Yes, no, no. All right. I also got a $20 donation from uh, Lena. Um, you know, I'm just going to call you Razius. <laughs> Thanks for the awesome marathon stream. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> now I'm in Chapter 8. And first, <laughs> sorry, there's a picture right there I'm laughing at. But, uh, <laughs> Anyway, I'm using the uh, Thunder Rage I picked up on the way back from Chapter 7, as well as Bombette's ability right here. These guys only have 8 HP, so I can kill them pretty easily. And this is also another forced battle, because this guy has a key like the guy in Chapter 1 did. So now I'm going inside, and at the end of this hallway, there's going to be a door who, I guess, asks me if I want to keep going or whatever, something like that, but then he tricks me and uh, makes me fall into a jail. But as, you're, as you might remember with Bombette, there's always a way out of a jail, so I'll be, able to, uh, I'll be able to get out of there and make my way back here. And that's where another, it, another big trick is coming up. It looks very small, but it's actually uh, pretty big in this chapter. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is get a life shroom from over here. Gonna need a couple later on, so I'll get that right now. I might actually have to get rid of that because of item space, but we'll see. Alright, so I blew up the wall there, and now I'm just gonna go this way and pull up Lackluster. Alright, so um, normally what you have to do in this chapter is you have to uh, pretty much save everybody in the jail, and by doing that, you have to go through the um, the basement of the chapter. But what I'm gonna do, instead of doing that, is I'm gonna do, I guess, like we don't even have a name for it. I, I'll just call it a block clip. And I'm gonna be using the Ultra Boots, basically, to clip through a badge block. And that's gonna allow me to skip the entire basement of this chapter. So like I was saying, this trick looks very small, but the amount of stuff it skips is uh, it's pretty big. Yeah, it's a lot. All right, so the block is right up here, so I just need to get in a specific spot. And I can clip through it like that. Now what I'm gonna do is parry carry over to the side. And there's like an invisible thing there that I can go on. And now I'm back in the front entrance. So that skip right there saved probably like 10 minutes or something. All right, now I'm just going back the way I came. Back down this hallway. And now this door is actually going to let me through for whatever reason. I don't know why he just doesn't drop the floor again, but he does. So I'm going through. And there's going to be a lot of clips coming up in the next uh, the next couple of rooms here. They're going to be all lackluster clips, which I did with uh, Staircase Skip earlier. And 
rooms. They're gonna make these rooms pretty cool, so. All right, so normally what you have to do in these rooms is uh, continually raise and lower the water in order to get the key at the top and then lower the water again to open the door. But what I'm gonna do here is, uh, this, this is very minor, this saves seconds, but I'm gonna lackluster clip on the edge over here. And what that's gonna allow me to do is uh, that. So now I'm walking on water. So normally you'd have to swim, but doing this is a little bit faster. I'm just gonna clip back and bounds right here. Like that. That lowers the switch, and now I'm on the top floor. So I need to raise the water one more time. I'm gonna blow up this wall right here. And there's another switch on top of this block. And this is another reason why the Ultra Boots are unskippable, because you'd have no way to reach that block if you didn't have them. So I gotta go all the way over to this chain. And this is gonna raise the water all the way to the top floor. So after I get the key here, normally, like I was saying, you'd have to lower the water again all the way to the bottom. But instead, I'm gonna do a series of uh, lackluster clips. And you'll see. Alright, so the only way to get over here is to swim to the key. Now I can open the door that's on the bottom floor again. So I'm gonna go in here and instead of lowering the water, I'm gonna clip into this wall. And I can fall straight down there. That's actually a uh, time saver right there. That's relatively new. Normally you used to uh, do two lackluster clips. Anyway, this trick right here is called Canonless. Um, it's actually pixel perfect. So I think I got the pixel right there, which I did. That'll let me to clip inside the wall. And now I wanna land on the edge of the world again, right here, which I did. So that was that was like a perfect Canonless right there. Nice. And nice. you can, I guess you can see why it's called Canonless because I skip all the uh, cannons in this room that I would normally have to fight. Hopefully this guy right here doesn't hit me. He can actually uh, hit you if you're really unlucky, but yeah, got lucky there, so. There's a strat coming up in this room um, for a hammer bro. This room actually used to be very dangerous, but thanks to a runner named Savvy, he found this strat where you can actually drag this hammer bro away, way over there like that, and by the time he gets back, I should be able to get through the door. Like that, all right. And that is th that is like actually a major strat because that guy right there, what we used to do is we used to just go up to the block and start pushing it. So we're, in we're invincible while we're pushing the block. But the thing is, that guy, he just turrets hammers at you the whole time. So if you're unlucky, which happens a lot on that guy, um, he can actually first strike you right out of that, right out of that uh, pushing animation. And what would happen is you get in an encounter and since I'm in chapter eight at a very low level, uh, the run meter starts out extremely low and it's, it's impossible to mash it all the way. So if I was to get in an encounter there, I might actually just like die. I've actually lost runs on world record pace to that guy before we actually had a strat for him. All right, so this quiz right here, it's, it's always the same. It's always one, one, two, one, one. The order never changes. Um, he's basically asking me specific questions like how many of the blue shy guy, for example. And I, I can't read Japanese, I just have it memorized. But yeah, it's always 1 1 2 1 1. So this is going to take another minute or so. So, another good time for donations. We've got a $20 donation from Philip Taylor. Awesome commentary. All right, thank you. Uh, we got a $20 donation from a lot of characters not being read, but I will try this. Um, or I'm just going to say Zeppelin. Yeah, that's a. Uh, hello, the French community. Got a $100 donation from Joseph Kerwin. You guys are all great. Heart. A $10 donation from Preston Stutzman. Though I didn't lose my mother to cancer, it's still something nobody should go through. Shoutouts to my favorite streamers, Pi, Almo, Stiv, and Flair. Love, Prue. Got a $10 donation from Okami163. Hey everyone, this is my first AGDQ and I can definitely say after this entire week it won't be my last. I decided to get the full experience and donate. 
that and I won't be able to donate during Cosmo's run, work strikes again. Thanks for such an amazing event and putting the money towards such an amazing cause. Got a $10 donation from Ricky Hua. Hey guys, loving AGDQ 2014. Paper Mario has always been one of my favorite childhood games. I love seeing Almo and Pi sitting on the couch in the back. I'll donate another $10 if I see them fight to the death. <laughs> Just kidding. <Do> <laughs> But I will donate if they give each other a big bro hug. Oh, they were already halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that quiz is finally done, and what I just grabbed was another jam and jelly. Um, I was right before my items were actually full, so I tossed away a life shroom. I'm not going to need it for now. But everything else that I have in my inventory, I need for fights coming up. So life shroom is the only thing that I can throw away. I do have one extra with me, but I'm unable to carry two at this point. So I have to get one later. So there's another small, not even really a puzzle, but it's basically I have to go upstairs, get a key, and then go back downstairs. Um, best way to do that, I guess, is use Cooper on this switch. You can actually use Bombette as well. I prefer using Cooper, but yeah, there's a key right here. And now I have to backtrack into that previous room, and I'm going to go to the bottom floor, and I'll be able to open the door now. This is probably the last scary screen in terms of encounters because, it's, again, it's a very narrow screen. It's tough to avoid them. So there's a little maze right here, which is also always the same. It's always up, down, down, up, down, up. So I just went up, and now I just need to follow the pattern, and I'll make it all the way through. If I was to do it wrong, um, it would just throw me all the way back to the beginning, and I'd have to do everything again. But, I mean, yeah, pretty easy to remember. It's, it's very convenient that the stuff like this is uh, it's always the same, like the quizzes and everything like that. Otherwise, we might run into some problems. All right, so this is the last screen with enemies on it, so with that, this run is officially encounter-free, I guess. And uh... <laughs> All right, so now I'm talking to Princess Peach, except it's not actually Princess Peach. It's actually some duple ghost, so I need to go to the sixth pole right here, turn around, and I saw the duple ghost. So now I have to hit her three times. And um, like I was explaining in chapter seven, if these guys transform, I can kill them in one hit. So I'm gonna be trying to do that right here. So I'm gonna do nothing with Mario. And I'm gonna power bomb right here just to get their HP down a little bit. So preferably at least three will transform. There's one one attack, so hopefully both of these two transform. There's one, and there's an attack. Okay, so, so since only two of them transformed, I have to use Star Storm right here. Um, if all of them would have transformed, I would have been able to just power bomb. If three transformed, I would have just jumped on the last one and then power bombed. So Star Storm, obviously the slowest, but I uh, got bad luck, so that's fine. Only wastes a few seconds. All right, so I'm gonna level again right here, and this is gonna be another FP level up. Um, reason being, it's gonna make Hallway Bowser and the next Junior Shriva fight a lot easier. So I'm gonna switch to Paracarry before this fight and going into Junior Shriva. This fight is uh, it's a very big, very big fight in any percent. Um, if this fight goes well for you, uh, you're pretty much good to go, but if it goes badly, there's not a lot you can do. I'm gonna lose a life shroom unless I get a close call, which I mean, at the rate I'm going, it might happen. But uh, yeah, I need to block every single attack. And on top of that, I need to uh, get a five bounce at the end. So if I'm unlucky and get a four cap, I'll be losing a life stream on this fight more than likely. All right, so same strat as always, I'm just charging up and using shell shot whenever I can. I got the first two blocks, and I'm going to use my last whack of them from Chapter 2. It's going to restore my health and FP. Another shell shot, and I need two more blocks, one more charge, and then at least a five bounce would be perfect. If I get a four, we might run into some problems coming up. Alright, I got all the blocks, now I got to get a five. Perfect, six, that's a perfect fight. Nice. 
All right, that's really good. Very well. So the reason that's so important is it allowed me to hang on to the life stream that I have. Um, I need a life stream for Final Bowser. And uh, there's another one I can get inside the castle, but I also have another kind of difficult fight coming up that we just call Hallway Bowser. Um, I can lose a life stream there very easily as well. So if I was to lose a life stream on Junior Troopa and then another life stream on Hallway Bowser, it would actually be impossible for me to kill Final Bowser. So I would have had to reset or something like that. So I got, I got lucky and uh, that's not gonna be the case. But I'm gonna save anyway, just in case something crazy happens. And now I'm gonna go into a section of this castle which is the library, and that's gonna have the life shroom, and it's also gonna have another badge called Power Rush. And what Power Rush does is it increases my damage by two whenever I'm in danger, which is five or less HP. So I'm only gonna be using it for this fight, but it makes this fight a lot safer. So there's my life shroom, and Power Rush is right here. So I'm just gonna equip it over close call right now. Like that. And if I get into danger on this fight, which I should, um, I'll be able to do a lot more damage than normal, so. The thing that's dangerous about Bowser in this game is that uh, his attacks can be hard to block, and his attacks are RNG as well. He has three attacks. He has Fire, Claw, and Stomp. Um, fire does eight normally, seven blocked. Um, claw, I believe, does six. It also poisons you if you don't block it. It does five blocked. And there's Stomp. Stomp does six, five blocked, and if you miss the block, you'll either lose your items, your jump, or your hammer ability for a few turns. So that's going to be very important on uh, these two fights. Alright, this first turn, he's giving me claw. And I got poisoned. That is very bad. Alright. So it's not a huge deal, but I'm hoping he, he gives me claw or uh, stomp on the next turn. If he gives me fire, I'm going to die, which isn't the end of the world because I do have a life shirt but I would like to hang on to it. All right, so this fight is always the same as well. He's gonna star out in this turn, and I'm gonna remove it and do a little bit more damage. And this turn right here, I guess, is gonna determine a lot, so uh, hopefully I will get, I guess I, I guess I would like stomp the most. Fire is gonna instantly kill me, and claw, um, I believe I'll die from poison damage, I could be wrong. He's giving me claw, and I blocked it, so I'm gonna live. Alright, so now I need a four bounce right here, that would be ideal. And I got it. Okay, good. That was a good fight as well. I missed the first block, but it was fine because he gave me another claw. Alright, so that's, this is my last level up, so I'm gonna level up HP again to 20. And the reason for that is that uh, Bowser's attacks get a lot stronger on the final fight. So um, he's going to be doing 10 damage with fire. He's going to be doing 8 with the other two attacks. Obviously, one less if I block them. And uh, there are some very important mechanics on that fight, which I'll explain in a little bit. But yeah, the amount of health I have right now is very important because I want to be able to get into danger on that fight. If I don't get into danger, he actually has a chance to heal himself. So. Pretty much the goal of this whole fight is to get into danger and then um, stay, at, stay in danger for as long as I can. So to do that, I'm going to be abusing the repel gels that I got throughout the run earlier. Alright, I'm also going to switch my badges right here. I only need two. I'm going to use Mega Jump and tri Triple Dip, which I both picked up in Chapter 7. Uh, triple Dip, like I said before, lets me use three items at once and Mega Jump is just a powered up jump attack. Alright, so that's all I need, they cost 3 BP each, I have 6 total, so that's all I can use. So this fight, um, it's definitely the, uh, the hardest fight of the game normally. Uh, it's very easy to lose a run to this fight, I've lost tons of uh, record pace runs to this fight. Um, fortunately though, I am using a different route than normal, with marathons for marathon, but uh, I have an extra repel gel than I usually get. So hopefully with that, uh, this fight should be a lot easier, but basically the way this fight goes normally is that if I miss like a single block, it's a reset, so. 
there's an attack later on in the fight that we call the wave. Um, what it does is, is it damages my partner. If I don't block it, my partner is out for three turns, which means I lose 12 damage total. So, generally, um, that is the end of your run if you miss blocking that. But with the extra repel gel, I should be okay. So the first phase is not much going on. There's just two turns, so I'm going to do Mega Jump and Shell Shot on both turns. And an interesting thing is that when I do Shell Shot, I can actually just click the control stick. Uh, Bowser's hitbox is so big that no matter where it is on the screen, you will always hit him with Shell Shot. All right, so now he powered up, so I'm just going to attempt to get rid of it, which isn't going to happen, but it'll happen soon. So anyway, I guess this is a good time to explain the mechanics of the fight. Um, as I mentioned, I want to get into danger. So he's going to be, uh, like, depending on which attacks he gives me, I need to block and get hit by certain attacks on the first two turns. Um, if, I, if I block attacks that I don't need to, I might knock it into danger. I might end up at 6 HP. And in the case that I do that, he'll be able to heal. Just for whatever reason, um, if you're at 5 HP or less, Bowser can't heal himself. I don't know why it's like that, but it is. On top of that, I also can't heal myself, and I also can't use a life stream. If I do either of those two things, he'll heal himself again. And when he heals, he heals for 30 HP, so it's pretty, it's pretty big. Uh, if it happens, there's basically no coming back from it. Um, I'm going to be using everything I have on this fight in order to kill him before he's able to heal. So... Yeah, the first two turns, they are more than likely going to determine the entire fight. Uh, I guess the best case scenario would be to get two fire attacks, because they're the easiest to block. I would block one of them and get hit by the other, it doesn't really matter what I do. I'd be at one HP, and then from there I just need to stay invincible for as long as I can. Um, if, if I get like double stomp or something like that, stomp is seven block. So if he just stomp on the first turn and I block it, and he does another stomp, uh, that's only going to do 14 damage to me. I need him to do 15. So if I if I risk it and not, not oh my god, and if I risk it and not block the stomp attack, um, I can actually lose my items. So if I lose my items, the run the run is basically dead as well. So I did save. So hopefully that won't happen. But uh, worst case scenario, I'll get two stomp attacks and pretty much just be unable to kill him because I won't be able to use my repel gels. Yeah, this, this fight right here, if you haven't already noticed, it's completely scripted. Um, basically, it's just the star twink powering up and going to eventually kill Kami Koopa here. And this turn, I believe he is invincible. Yep. This is the last turn. She's all scared now. And this is the last hit. And she's dead. So, tough fight. I had to try my best for that one. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, now we're getting into the real fight, phase two. Uh, first things first, I'm going to get a powered up star beam. Um, if you notice on the first fight, the star beam didn't work. So this time, um, the star twink, now that he's stronger, he's going to help out with the star beam. And now I can actually remove it from Bowser. So this, this cutscene right here is one of the spots where, uh, where BC actually loses a lot of time. You'll notice that it's like pretty slow. It's actually going like half speed compared to, compared to what it's supposed to be going. But again, that's, that's just VC. Um, if, you saw the, if you compared this cutscene with N64, you'd be pretty surprised at how fast the N64 one goes. So yeah, super laggy right here. And serious fight. Here we go. Alright, so first things first, I gotta remove his beam. Which I'm gonna do right here. And then after this, I'm gonna shell shot. So, this is where his attacks come into play. I need him to give me two attacks that are gonna get me into danger, and preferably aren't hard to block, like Claw. Claw, I'd say, is the hardest to block. Uh, fire and Stomp are both pretty easy. Alright, let's see what he wants to do. This is Stomp. And I blocked it. Okay, so. Now the next attack is pretty important. Um, like I was mentioning, if he gives me Stomp again, that is pretty much the worst possible luck I can get. I'm gonna have to purposely not block it in order to get into danger, and there's a one in three chance that I'll lose my items, so. Hopefully I get Claw or Fire right here, and I'll get into danger and not lose my items or anything. So I got Fire, which is perfect. 
So now, as you can see, I'm at 4 HP or danger. So now what I'm going to do is start abusing my repel gels. And I'm going to be doing this for the rest of the fight. So I'm going to be using those shooting stars I got earlier, along with my repel gels, to deal some extra damage here. So I'm pretty much on a time limit at this point for uh, how long I can stay alive with all my repel gels. All right, one more shell shot right here. Now Bowser can do some stuff to uh, determine how the fight goes again. Like right here, he's using he's using his star beam again. Uh, it's a turn three beam. He can do it on turns three, four, five, six, and seven. Three, four, and five are most common. But anyway, I'm gonna get rid of it again. Uh, I'm lucky because I still have my repel gel on. Sometimes if he does it on turn four, I would actually have to repel gel and then do nothing with my partner because I wouldn't be able to do any damage. So. I was kind of lucky that it was a turn three, but he might be able to star beam again in the fight. All right, let's see what he wants to do. So this is the wave attack, and I got hit by it. So that right there is the attack that I was talking about, where in normal runs, um, that would pretty much be the end of my run. But uh, fortunately, since I have extra repel gels, I'm going to be able to live a lot longer. So even though my partner is out and um, I'm losing 12 damage, I should still be okay. So what I did there is use another repel gel and refill my FP and use my last attack to do a shooting star again. Alright, so he stomped. Now from here I'm at the point where I'm just going to start spamming Mega Jump and Shell Shot on every single turn uh, until my FP runs out and then I'm going to have to start using Star Storm. So another one right, no, this is a repel gel actually. Should I triple? No. I'm just going to repel gel right here. I could have triple dipped for extra 6 damage but I'm just going to repel gel by itself. He's using Beam again, so this is the second time he's used Beam in the fight. But uh, again, I have Repel Gel on right now, so I can get rid of it. And I'll be able to do some extra damage for my partner again next turn. One thing I'm worried about is if he does Wave again and I don't block it, I'm going to lose another 12 damage. So I'm hoping either I block it or he doesn't do it again. I should be fine no matter what, but uh, yeah, best case scenario, he just doesn't use Wave again. Here's Wave. Oh man, alright, I missed both, so that's uh, kind of bad. Alright, so I mega jump him right here, and I have one more turn left basically. So I'm dying right here. And hopefully he only has 8 HP left. That's all I can do. If this does not kill him, he is going to heal. There's a very high chance he will heal, so hopefully this will kill. Which it didn't, all right. So nothing I can do about that, that is, that is a reset. Um, but it was completely my fault, that's something I'm known for, is uh, <laughs> missing that wave block. <laughs> so, oh well. Not the end of the world, but I am gonna have to do that fight again. So that's pretty much like the worst thing that could have uh, possibly happened there. Like I was saying, he beamed twice, and he used Wave twice, which is extremely rare, but I guess I got so lucky earlier in the run that I deserve some bad luck. So again, I gotta equip my stuff. Alright, I gotta do everything again. So, we got donations. Good time again. Sure. Certainly have plenty of those. I want to once again thank you guys for sending so much in. We've crossed over $695,000 now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've got a $10 donation from Shakangel. Is that it? Yep, I said it right. <laughs> Amazing runs, guys. One of my best friends has fought cancer for five years now, and she sends you her best wishes and thanks. Keep it up. Got a $20 donation from under 9,000. This marathon has been so amazing, guys. With events like this, cancer is gonna be history. I'm so sad that it's already almost over, but then I remember that Wind Waker and Chrono Trigger are coming up. Best day ever? I think so. Put this donation towards the runner's choice. I've got $83.83 from Cole Forbin. Happy Saturday, folks. It's been a fun and amazing week. $15 from B. Dash S. Hello from hello from France. Love you all. I want some clappers for all the runners and all the staff of AGDQ. You guys are awesome. 
part. Almost 700K, that's amazing. We've got a $50 donation from Daniel Gonzalez. Never seen speedruns before, but watching these has been great. Recently, my cousin was diagnosed with leukemia, and he has so far been able to beat it. So happy to see events like this raising so much money for the cause. I've got a $5 donation from Sefi Woot. This is for Blue Glass to stand up, take his glasses off, point at the camera, and say, this is for you, baby. Rolling on top of that, we got $5 from Boop Bop. Thank you for all the entertaining speed runs. Here's five more dollars towards another button unbuttoned. Oh my God. <laughs> Can See, I help you with this? This is a problem because this morning I just put on, I kept the shirt on that I wore last night because I was rushing to get down here, so it's just like this terrible color. It's good. I was hoping we wouldn't get far enough to see it, but I mean. This terrible color. <laughs> Everyone's at home judging your app because you're wearing a shirt. <laughs> Could be worse. You could have no shirt on. That is very true. I could have no shirt on. <laughs> All right. So hopefully this time around, uh, things will be a little bit different. Um, so yeah, that last wave was definitely all my fault. Uh, I missed both of those wave blocks, which is very bad. And on top of that, I think I made a bad decision on uh, on one of the later turns when I just used a repel gel and didn't use a shooting star. I think I should have used that right there, and I would have been fine, but uh, I thought it was going to be okay. So, my fault, but what can I do, I guess? I've also got a $100 donation from CJ Ferg 691 Hey guys, I love the work you guys are doing. My mom was just recently diagnosed with thyroid cancer, and seeing you guys run my favorite games for such a great cause really gives me a lot of hope for her recovery. I'm working on my Paper Mario run. Watch out, Anatomy. Z. Haha. We've got a $20 donation from Darno C. Keep up the good work, guys. Really enjoying the stream, even though my girlfriend isn't as happy about me watching yeah. you guys all day. By the way, Blue Glass is awesome. We've got a $20 donation from Jack D. Someone very dear to me lost their mother at a young age to cancer. Continue the good work, kicking cancer in the teeth, so that no child will have to grow up without such an important part of their life. We've got a $200 donation from Adam Yakaran. I'd just like to thank you guys for the extremely... I, this music in the background is so holy. Um, I'd just like to thank you guys for the extremely unproductive work week, and probably the next one, too, while I look at archived runs. $20 from Josh Ray Person. So sad it's soon over. This past week has been amazing. Had to donate something. It's not much, but it's something. Keep up the good work. Greetings from Malmo, Sweden. One, right. I'll go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Do you want to oh. read one more? Oh. $100 from Peter Collingwood. From Peter and Debbie Collingwood, well done, everyone. ESP Ken, a.k.a. your name here. Okay, so again, same thing as last fight. Um, I just removed his beam, and on that turn right there, I blocked Claw, which is very good. That attack is pretty scary normally, so it's good that I blocked it. Now I need either Claw or Fire again. Same thing as last fight. If I get that, I will be in danger. If I get Stomp, it is very unlucky. So I got Fire again, which is good. So same thing again now. I'm um, just going to use my Repel Gels to stay invincible. And this time, hopefully, I won't choke and actually block the wave, but uh, we'll see. All right, some more damage with my Shooting Stars right now. And let's see what he wants to do. He used his Beam on this, on this turn last fight, so it might be different. Yeah, he's using fire now, okay. So instead I'm gonna switch to Paracarry right now and get rid of some more FP. And then uh, triple dip now and refill all my FP again. On top.
top of doing more damage with my shooting stars. All right, so he's probably gonna beam on either this turn or the next one. This one is the most common, but uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. So if he does it on this turn, that's probably the worst thing, but he's, he's uh, attacking again, so that's good. So I have to uh, repel gel. And I can shell shot again right here. So now this turn he will probably beam. All right, there it is. So now I can remove it uh, since I already have my repel on. And now I'm worried about the wave attack again. Since he's doing such a late pattern this time, it might be okay if I miss the block again. But uh, hopefully I just block it and the fight will be over a lot quicker. All right, let's see what he wants to do. Nope, he's doing a lightning attack. So this one doesn't do anything. Uh, I already have Repel on, so that's fine. I'm gonna put my last Repel on right now. And now this is Wave. All right, that time I blocked it. So that's gonna be the end of the fight now for sure. So it should have happened the first time. Uh, he should be dead right here, actually. Nope. One more turn. Yeah. Four health? Yeah. All right, but either way, normally um, in any percent, what you do is you actually die every fight. But since I have that extra repel gel, that's not even going to happen. So I'm just going to kill him right now, which is uh, faster than normal, I guess. But the strats I had to use are a lot slower to get the extra repel gel. And should be dead right here. Yep, he's dead. All right. No, it's not time yet. Yeah. Sorry, I, sh I should have mentioned that, but it's not time yet. Uh, there's a little bit of stuff left, and I have to um, fulfill the donation incentive. So there's a little bit more to go. But anyway, yeah, that was, uh, that was a good second fight. That should have happened the first time, but it's... It's whatever, unfortunate, but uh, yeah, anyway, that's Paper Mario, so. I hope you guys enjoyed the run, other than <laughs> a huge choke at the end, but what can you do? Anyway, uh, I just want to give a shout out to a few of the other um, people in the Paper Mario community. Um, first of all, Rob Dog and Bone Crusher. Uh, most of the tricks you saw in this run were discovered by them. Uh, without them, this game would still probably be around like the uh, four hour mark, more than likely, so. Huge shout out to them for discovering a lot of the glitches. Also, Flair, still here? Yeah, Flair right back there. <laughs> uh, Headstrong, uh, just all the all the other runners, like all the new runners. Uh, we got Pi over here, we got Elmo. Bosby, who's done a run. Uh, <laughs> Actually, it was the worst time on the leaderboard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just like, every, I know there's a bunch of other runners watching at home, so like we got like, uh, we got Juicy, Ishinism, Geminio, Giga, DSY, Seven. Uh, stealthy. I'm sorry if I missed anyone, but yeah, I don't have a list or anything. Hopefully I got all the uh, current runners right there, but yeah, the uh, game would be nothing without all the people involved, so huge shout out to everyone who's made this game become what it is. So anyway, we, we, we uh, recently changed the timing of this game. We used to time all the way to the end of the credits, but recently we decided it was kind of pointless because the credits are nine minutes long. Uh, so what we do instead is we just go to the, um, the castle cutscene coming up to when uh, Peach raises her hands. Um, the reason we do that instead of just stopping at the star rod is there's actually movement coming up that I have to still do, as well as a skip. Uh, the skip is called Luigi Skip. And basically what happens is if I do the skip, it saves like 10 seconds or something. Um, Luigi doesn't get to come to the party at the end of the game. <laughs> so. There was a donation incentive I added yesterday uh, for Luigi to come to the party. So that was met. So I'm purposely going to fail the skip and Luigi gets to come hang out. Yeah! Here, Luigi! <laughs> Alright, so there's like a few, uh, there's a couple more minutes of cutscenes coming up. So if you have. Sure. More donations, another good time. We got a ten dollar donation from Yannick Jagel. I've been watching all for, I've been watching for all the week. 
I lost my grandfather to lung cancer when I was very young, so I hope this helps. Keep it up. The end goal is near. Got a $20 donation from Suki Kaji. So hyped for the finale runs tonight. You guys are amazing for doing this for such a great cause. $50 from Yuho. Hello, everyone. I've been following AGDQ and other speedrunning marathons since last year, and this is the first time I'm donating. It simply is commendable that you all you are all using those well-earned skills for a great cause. After hearing many of the donation comments, I find myself lucky to have been spared the ravages of cancer. This money goes to the ones who are less fortunate. Godspeed. $20 from Cam Rosie. Loving watching AGDQ this year. Keep up all the great work. $10 from Jessica Cantlow. This is for all the people touched by cancer. Paper Mario is one of my all-time favorite games. I'm so happy you streamed it for AGDQ. Good luck and thank you, everyone. $100 from Sweetie and Cakes. From Sweden, with love, thank you for all, thank you all for a great event. The punch out runs blew us away. Can't wait for the next AGDQ. P.S. Like the segment of Awful Games Done Quick. $50 from The Ray. Keep up the good work, guys. $13.37 from Kai Kubasta. Thanks for the great speedruns. $50 from Mike Lorenzen. Thanks for an amazing marathon. Gimme, gimme the Majora's Mask bundle. All right, so I'm pretty much at the end of these cutscenes now, and this is where Luigi skip would happen. It's uh, it, it's not even really like a like a trick. It's very easy to do. All you do is just hold down on your control stick during the next cutscene, and for whatever reason, uh, they give you control of Mario before you're all the way down the pipe. So what that would do is uh, skip the cutscene on the next screen because Luigi doesn't actually make it through the pipe. So usually I'm just instinctively holding down at this point, waiting for the next screen. But instead I'm just I'm not even gonna like put my hand on the controller because I I need to fail this to meet the uh, incentive. So it's gonna happen right right away. Otherwise you'd have to redo the Bowser fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh don't do that. Oh don't do that. All right, so right here, that's what I was saying. I would, if, if I was uh, doing a run, I'd just be holding down, and I'd go down the pipe early, but instead I'm letting Luigi come to Oh. <laughs> so, that was a small cutscene right here. And he gets to come hang out. So now I have to move all the way to the castle. And time is going to come up at the end of this cutscene coming up here. Uh, basically, Peach is going to look like she's praying or something, and there's two more text boxes, and she's going to raise her hands. When she raises her hands, that's time. Alright. So just a little bit of text. Two more text boxes, and time. Right. Not, not bad considering the uh, failed Bowser fight, because that's like nine minutes gone. So that would have been a pretty good run other than that. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's the end. Uh, we don't need to watch the credits. They're nine minutes long, so. Whoever the next runner is, I think it's Peaches. Yes. Peaches. So you guys can get ready for some SM64 one-handed. It's pretty interesting, so stick around for that. Uh, one more thanks for Anatomy Z for Paper Mario. <laughs> As he already mentioned, next up we got Peaches playing Super Mario 64 with one hand. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back.